Jim, tell me how it all started. 1942, the boy from New York City was born. Not Jimmy Valiant, but James Harold Fanning. Tallahoma, Tennessee. Southern born and Southern bred. And when I die, I'm going to be Southern dead. <laughs> well, hey, you know, uh, I was born to a very, very um, Christian family, Southern family, born uh, in a, a, a home that my father built on a small farm. Um, I had four older sisters. When I was uh, two, three years old, my father and mother uh, moved uh, our family north uh, to Hammond, Indiana. That's as far north as you can get, um, uh, right on Lake Michigan. In fact, we're, we're, we're uh, just 30 miles from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Um, the, so, so you know exactly where we're, I was raised. And he moved up to, uh, to feed his family. Uh, it was uh, uh, wartime, and, and um, um, he, he uh, got up there and got a job with Ford Motor Company, became a um, millwright. And um, a, lot of, a lot of Southern men came that way to raise their families. And the um, steel mills and the, the uh, uh, different factories loved to hire the Southern men because uh, they were just used to working on them farms in Alabama, Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, and um, they were hardworking uh, 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 boys, and, and uh, they, they would give um, their employer 100% uh, 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 work, you know, because uh, they were used to it, so they loved them. And um, I was raised right there, uh, four older sisters, as I said, I was a baby, and. Um, I um, just uh, went to uh, uh, grade school, and uh, years ago they didn't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, all they had were like was gym. There was no uh, sports in grade school, but uh, I wanted to build my body. I wanted to do something physical, you know. And uh, uh, I remember talking uh, to my dad. I seen uh, <laughs> this. Uh, Atlas course in a magazine somewhere, you know, and they said, um, you know, build your body, you know, in 10 ways, dynamic tension, and it showed a, a skinny 99-pound uh, boy, and uh, uh, here's some he-man uh, kicking sand in this guy's face and taking his girl from him at the beach, and, uh, you know, uh, that one little, uh, 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 you know, advertisement uh, changed my life, as it did many of the young boys, uh, I, I can imagine, but it sure changed mine. And, and I told my dad, I says, you know, how do you build these muscles, you know? And, and um, he um, told me that there was a, 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 a big uh, barbarian, I mean huge, you know, over where he worked uh, as a millwright, and he says, uh, I'm going to weld a handle on one of them and bring it home to you. And, and um, I was just uh, 11, 12 years old and um, never been around a gym. You know, there was no uh, weights in school or, or, or nothing. So uh, he came, he brought that home, and, man, I was so happy. And I didn't know what I was doing, but, I, man, I'd lift that thing. And, oh, we weighed it. We weighed it somewhere, and, and it weighed uh, uh, something like 17 pounds. And, and man, I, I, I do all kinds of different exercises with it and, until my muscles burn and, and didn't know what I was doing, but um, man, it made me happy. And, and I remember every night before I go to bed, I'd jump down, I'd do 25 push-ups, you know, and I'd jump in bed, man, and man, my heart was just a beating, man, and, and I'd just, uh, you know, dream about big muscles and, and uh, you know, a nice body, and, and, and this is what I was wanting to achieve, you know, and, um, uh, even at that early age, and um, uh, hey, you work at something, man, you know, uh, at long enough, and, and it happens, you know, and uh, um, of course, um, when I got into high school, um, they had no wrestling uh, uh, program, you know, like, like they do now, 
but they, they, they did have a, a football, of course, and man, I, I played football from junior high. I played football seven years, six years. Um, in fact, um, when I was in sixth grade, uh, I'd go and, uh, you know, work out with them a little bit, uh, which I, I, I wasn't supposed to, but the uh, coach let me in. Uh, so I loved football. It was contact. It was um, uh, something that um, got me, you know, uh, prepared for my destination, uh, my dream of becoming a professional wrestler because um, I had that contact um, once I got in, broke into pros and, you know, for, uh, you know, uh, 40, uh, almost 50 years now. After uh, you graduated from Hammond Tech, uh, talk about what you did after graduation. You kind of got married young and you were working at the Hebrews Health Club, kind of, but you also did a few other things too. Yeah, I uh, graduated from Hammond Tech, and, and uh, this was a technical school. Uh, we had uh, shop half a day, and then we had uh, a academics half a day, and, and uh, they were preparing you uh, if you didn't uh, want to continue going to college. So th that's, that's why I chose Tech, Hammond Tech, uh, because I wanted to, uh, you know, work in a mill or work in like my father did. And, um, uh, but once I got out of school, I... Um, I, I uh, man, I, I couldn't get the football out of my mind, so so uh, I went and checked uh, playing semi-pro football, and um, it, what semi-pro football at that time and today even, you know, it what it means is, is semi-pro football, but it's semi-pro pay too, you know, the the pay wasn't there. Uh, uh, if you're lucky, they would split it up at the end of the year. You're lucky to get money, and when I found that out, and uh, I did um, uh, get married, uh, uh, you know, right out of high school, and uh, I already had a, 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 my firstborn, Robin Lynn, you know, my baby, probably my pride and joy, and um, so I had to get a, a job, and, and uh, I chose to um, go to a barber college, and, and um, it was Moeller Barber College, Chicago, Illinois, and it was 1,872 hours, you know, you had to put in to uh, graduate. And I did uh, that uh, six days a week, uh, eight hours a day. So you go punch a clock, you know, and I'd cut hair. And, and uh, so I thought this is what I wanted to do. Um, I was working at the Acres uh, all this time also, and uh, uh, a guy there at the Acres was an old-time uh, pro wrestler. His name was Frank Zila, and he wrestled as one of the Volkov brothers. Uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, it was Bo uh, 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 Boris and, and Nikolai Volkov. Uh, now, I'm not talking about the Nikolai Volkov that uh, fans remembered uh, in the 70s and the 80s uh, uh, where, you know, he teamed up with... Um, uh, the Iron Sheik and became WWF uh, Tag Team Champions. I'm talking about the original Nikolai Volkov and Boris Volkov. They uh, were uh, hot, the hottest in the, in the Midwest, Chicago, Illinois, and the country um, in, the, in the 50s, you know, and, and the 60s, you know. So this was uh, before uh, uh, this other Nikolai Volkov, which I know and know, know very well, and a great guy, man. And, and, um, but um, they broke me in, you know. Uh, he says, uh, Jimmy, man, you got, you're young, you're good looking, you got nice hair, you got a good body. You know, he says, you should do this, you know, pro wrestling. And I says, um, man, you know, uh, uh, he was my boss, Frank Zila. He said, I'll train you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, take you under my wing. And um, uh, hey, you know, he was feeding my family. You know, I was running his health club and uh, I was cutting hair on the side at this time. and. Uh, uh, the year was 1964, and um, I said, fine, brother. So, uh, hey, he broke me in, and uh, everything happened so fast in my life. You know, uh, uh, my goodness, it, it was offered to me, you know, uh, here's a platter, man. You know, he, he just uh, offered it to me, and, and I took to it like a, a duct tape to water, man. Uh, tell me about the four weeks of training that he gave you and your I guess your best friend at the time, Gary? Just yes, Gary. Yes, uh, there was another big kid, Gary Molenauer, and uh, he was uh, uh, there at the gym uh, with me, and he was, uh, I was managing the gym, and Gary was one of the instructors there, and, and we'd work out together. We were just two big raw bone kids, man, you know, both 6'3", and, you know, 240 pounds, man, and, you know, we was just uh, 
uh, nothing but uh, twisted steel and sex appeal, man. Uh, we had the big, you know, uh, 18, 19 inch arms at the time, just kids too, man, but we really uh, trained hard. And uh, um, he, um, uh, Gary, once I told Gary that uh, Frank Zila was going to break me in, you know, he says, oh man, I wish uh, he would break me in. I said, well, go ask them, man, you know. So he went and found Frank and um, Asked Frank to, you know, hey, uh, you know, uh, I'd love to wrestle pro too, you know, like Jimmy. And he said, well, hey, while well, I'm training Jimmy, I'll train you. So uh, what we did, uh, we meet in the um, dojo room, which was uh, the karate room uh, uh, that they, they taught classes there in, um, in the early 60s and uh, at the Acres. At, this was in Calumet City, Illinois, you know, right, right across the line from Hammond, Indiana, my hometown. And um, so... Uh, uh, we would meet in the uh, dojo room, and, and Frank would come in uh, on Monday, the first Monday of our class, and he says, man, just wrestle, you know, for the f a full hour. So me and Gary, man, we, we bucked horns, man. We, the, we was like two uh, raging bulls, you know. Uh, we didn't know nothing about nothing except, uh, man, getting in there and digging and scratching like football. Man, we was killing each other, you know. And, Man, we, our elbows, our, 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 our skin, our knees, our skin, our lips are busted, our nose is bleeding, our eyes are cut, man. You know, we got both shiners, and uh, man, we're just going at it, killing each other. And, uh, but we did it every day. We wrestled each other for that week. And uh, the second week, uh, Frank came in and says, okay, this time uh, I want you to wrestle, but also uh, he picked us up and he body slammed us now. He body slammed us just on a mat, you know, in this uh, concrete room floor, you know. And um, so uh, he said the first half hour, man, me and Gary, we just pick each other up and slam each other down. And then the second half of that uh, one hour that next week, we'd just wrestle. And, and uh, uh, I says, you know, uh, brother, after we got done, you know, that second week, we'd, we'd go, of course, in uh, uh, to the steam bath and and, uh, and you take a shower and clean up and that because we had to work uh, the the the, the, the um, health club that the rest of the day. I said Gary, I said brother, there's got to be an easier way to do this, man. You know, and um, you know so so the following week he came in and he showed us to just give a big forearm smashes, you know, to our chest and and uh, so we did that and the fourth week. Um, we we uh, gave us another lesson, uh, just a, a, a tie-up, headlock, and a takeover, you know. And then we combined everything, and we continued wrestling. So we had four weeks of training, and um, the, the fifth week, Gary, uh, uh, Frank Zila called me in from home. He says, uh, it was on a Monday, he says, Jimmy, come in, brother. Uh, I, I need to talk to you this morning, you know. Uh, we opened, I opened the... Um, the uh, uh, Acres Health Club at 10 o'clock, and we close it at 10, man, 12 hours, you know, I was there, you know, and um, so, uh, but while I was there, you know, I, I had my, uh, my barber chair down there, I'd cut hair, I'd give massages, man, I did all kinds of different things there to, uh, to make money to feed my family, you know, and uh, uh, now professional wrestling is, is on the rise, you know, it's, it's in my future, so, uh, that's just another way, you know, that uh, I, I was going to uh, be able to do that uh, to uh, feed my family. So I was very excited. Uh, but the, the fifth week, um, he, he called me in early. Uh, so I got there like 930. And uh, um, so Frank is in his office and uh, he's got sunglasses on and uh, he had all the lights down low. And uh, man, it, it, you know, something I knew was was something not right, you know, and I looked and I, I said, man, you know, and I looked at his forehead and, it, man, it swelled up and, and, and um, his eyes are almost shut, you know. It looked like he got run over by a freight train or something, something, you know. I said, but he looked like me and Gary look, man, you know, we was all busted up. We're killing each other. And, and I didn't know what happened, really. And, um, but he had some type of operation done on his head and um, it just... Um, uh, black both his eyes and swelled them up and he says I'm, I'm on my way to um, Florida you know the little R&R &R, you know to uh, uh, recuperate he didn't want to, no one see him uh, after he had this done that that the weekend and uh, um, he says uh, uh, this Saturday you know five days from now he says um, uh, you and Gary are is going to have your first match and uh, I said, what, what? <laughs> yeah, and he says, you're gonna take the Volkov spot. So uh, him and his partner, um, they were um, 
uh, wrestling in Chicago at the uh, St. Andrews Arena. And um, uh, so we were taking the Volkov spot, you know, their place, and they were in the main event. And here we've never had a match. Here we've never stepped foot in a ring. And now we're going in and being the main event, uh, our first match, you know. Uh, oh, my goodness, boy. And, and uh, it really took us by surprise, you know. And um, he says, um, I already told him you guys' uh, name is uh, Jimmy and Johnny Valentine. And uh, you're from California, Hollywood, California. He says, uh, you guys go bleach your hair blonde this week. And uh, uh, he's, uh, he already, uh, uh, you know, got his boots. We already had boots and, and, and trunks, you know, and, and um, that he bought uh, from, uh, for us, you know, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. We already had our publicity pictures made and, and everything. And um, he says, um, uh, this week, he says, go downstairs and, he says, talk to Bobby Manigoff. Bobby was a um, old-time wrestler, which, I, I, of course, I knew, you know, and he was doing the massage and then at that time down there. And, uh, in fact, he was a world champion. He was an NWA world champion in the year I was born. I was born in 1942, and he was a world champion in 1942. And this is the same belt, uh, you know, NWA that Flair had and, and, and uh, um, uh, Harley Race and, and Briscoe and and, and uh, Dory Funk Jr., you know, this is the, the, the same, same uh, NWA uh, uh, heavyweight uh, belt title that he had. Um, and and um, so I would go and uh, pick his mind, you know, uh, when I could, you know, I would, if he wasn't busy and we spent a lot of time together. And, uh, and he, he showed us a lot. He taught me a lot that week. And, uh, but we went in the first... Uh, uh, first shot, man. Five weeks of training, brother, and, and uh, brother. You, you know, after that, hey, uh, I fell in love with it. And um, uh, hey, to this day, this is going on my 47th year. In fact, last Saturday, I was in the ring. I wrestled in uh, Haysai, uh, uh, Virginia. Um, uh, I wrestled. Me and Iron Cross wrestled uh, uh, Stan Lee and and um, a big uh, Frank the Tank Parker. So, uh, the, hey, you're still going, man. 47 years in uh, the square circle, and, um, hey, it's just part of my life. I love it. After that, you started working for Dick the Bruiser, the Sheik, uh, Bernie Gagne, and Sam Mucci. Just talk about that, and talk about the different names that you had to use in each, each territory. Yeah, I, uh, 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 Zila uh, Volkov gave me my first name, Jimmy Valiant, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, J Jimmy uh, Valentine. Um, and and um, uh, then uh, he introduced me to uh, Dick the Bruiser, and Dick, uh, man, he was the hottest thing in the country. He was the world's most dangerous wrestler, and he was also my second mentor, and, and uh, he took me under his wing, and uh, uh, he let me use uh, Jimmy uh, Valentine. Uh, uh, but then he entered, uh, a, a bruiser introduced me to uh, uh, the Sheik, and, and uh, he ran, uh, well, well, bruiser ran uh, uh, AWW in, in Annapolis, Indiana, and he had his territory in Indiana. And then uh, he introduced me to the Sheik, and it was big time wrestling out of Detroit, Michigan, Cobo Hall, and, and, and all throughout Michigan and Ohio, and they called that uh, uh, big time wrestling. Uh, NWA Big Time Wrestling, and, and uh, Sheik uh, changed my name to uh, uh, Big John Valen. And so uh, when I wrestled for the Sheik, I was Big John Valen. And um, then uh, Bruiser, Dick the Bruiser, introduced me to uh, Vern Gagne, uh, you know, and, and of course they're out of Minnesota, um, and um, they, they, uh, they have their own, you know, world champion. And, and, and uh, which was Vern at that time, and and he um, changed my name to Jimmy the Body Valen. So I'd go up uh, in in Minnesota or Wisconsin, and and I'd wrestle as Jimmy the Body Valen. And then um, I um, oh they they introduced me to Sam Mushnick, and and I used Jimmy the Body Valen there. So they didn't want no one wanted Jimmy Va uh, Johnny uh, Jimmy Val Valentine because of Johnny Valentine, you know, and he was the big star throughout the country. And uh, so everywhere, each territory I go to, uh, although I was still living in Hammond, Indiana, and working at the Acres, and, 
and um, I'd work three, two, three, four times a week, uh, you know, and, and but I'd work uh, maybe five different territories, but uh, on the programs, I was all called uh, Big John Valen, uh, Jimmy Valen, uh, Valentine, uh, uh, Jimmy the Body Valen, and um, they, they sent me to uh, Nick Goulis in, in, uh, in um, Nashville, and Nick uh, changed my name to uh, uh, Jimmy Mc, Big, Big, uh, Big Jim uh, McDonald and said I was uh, uh, in the McDonald hamburger chain family and I was, you know, a, a rich, spoiled, uh, you know, a boy and uh, that's how that happened. But uh, uh, I didn't really change uh, uh, Jimmy Valiant uh, came about uh, in, in, uh, when they sent me to Dallas, Texas with Fritz Von Erich and um, Fritz, uh, jo in fact, Johnny Valentine was there uh, working his territory, and, and he says, uh, Jimmy, we're going to have to change your name. Uh, uh, Jimmy Valen and, and uh, Johnny Valentine is too close. And he looked at me and he says, um, your name is going to be Handsome Jimmy Valiant. And Brother, once that was said and, and uh, once that was uh, laid on me, that was my moniker uh, from um, uh, Fritz von Erich. Um, I went from there to Madison Square Garden to uh, Vince McMahon Sr. Uh, uh, tell me the story about going, in, get, going to the Dallas office and being told that Fritz wanted to see you. Tell me that story about, and then that's when he told you about going to the chance to go to New York. Tell me that story. Yeah, you know, uh, how this all happened was uh, uh, I, I was only at the uh, territory uh, maybe three months. I just moved my family from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, made a major change. I got three daughters, young daughters. Uh, one of my daughters, Rhonda, just uh, 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 found out she had uh, juvenile diabetes. Uh, she was only four or five years old, and uh, we just made a major move from... Uh, uh, Illinois to uh, uh, Tulsa. We were there only four months. Uh, they called for me in Dallas, so I just made another major uh, move and be sitting up, uh, you know, getting an apartment, getting all the kids in school, different schools, and, uh, you know, getting uh, new doctors for, uh, for, for uh, Rhonda and, and um, Dana, uh, my other baby, and, and, and uh, Robin. So, so, um, I was only there three months, and, and um, on Saturday, this was a Bible belt. They didn't wrestle on Sunday. So Saturday night, um, uh, Danny Pledges, uh, uh, which is, was one of the uh, referees, old-time wrestler, old-time boxer, pro boxer, man, he says, um, uh, Jimmy says, uh, Fritz wants to see you uh, uh, Monday in, in his office at 10 o'clock, man. Don't be late, son. It's sharp, 10 o'clock. And I says, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, What's it about with Dan, Danny? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. He just told me to. I said, oh, man. So now I'm worried all the way. I said, what did I do? I do something wrong. I said, I just moved my family here. I thought I'm going to get the pink slip or something. You know, I said, you know, what did I do? I'm, I'm busting my can. I'm just a young kid, still green, you know. And he gave me my name, Handsome Jimmy Valiant. I'm, I'm happy. And, man, I just love the territory. The Hope Loop was only 1,300 miles, you know, and, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, th that's all we had to drive, 1,300 miles every week, you know, where many territories, you double that, you know, so it was a really, and oh, the weather was great. I, re I remember first time, you know, uh, Christmas, uh, we, uh, I took my girls to uh, the little shopping center. We seen Santa Claus there uh, uh, ringing the bell for um, uh, the, the um, what was the name of that? What's that it's name? Clean. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got tickled because we see Santa Claus there for Salvation Army, and uh, he's got the Santa Claus beard and the red suit and the hat on and everything, but he's got Bermuda shorts on, you know, and, and it, it was funny because, uh, you know, we were laughing, uh, me and my uh, babies, and because we're used to coming out of Chicago, the Windy City, where right off that Lake Michigan, man, you know, blowing snow and uh, and it's really cold, and um, but uh, so I was really enjoying the weather, and everybody there is really great. Um, so so Sunday, so all day Sunday, man, I'm I'm worried. I said, oh man, what did I do? I didn't want to do something, that, 
you know, I'm thumb will get chewed out. And so I go in there and um, I'm really nervous. And <laughs> Fritz says, um, Jimmy says, uh, I got a call today. And uh, he says, um, he says, I got a call from Vince McMahon. And uh, he says, uh, they're looking for a young, good looking kid to go up to New York. And, uh, you know, at that time, brother, you know, uh, I didn't know the opportunity that was laid in front of me, you know. At that time, I'm saying, but, but Fritz, I want to stay here. You know, I'm, I'm, man, I just moved my family. I'm happy, man. You know, you know hey, you know, uh, 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 in Tulsa, I, I was making $300 a week. And, and, and uh, you know, and now, uh, you know, and, and, and um, for Fritz, I was making $400 a week as a $100 a week rate. And that was, a, you know, that was a, a, a good money back then. We're, we're, we're um, at that time, if you had a regular job, you know, in a, in a factory or something, uh, the men would work 40 hours and, and they'd bring home maybe just over $100 a week, you know, or, or 100, and, you know, if you're, if you're a, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a journeyman uh, had a trade, then you could make maybe $150. So I was making double what a, a man could make, you know, by, by working in a steel mill or, or somewhere at this time, you know, in, in, the, in the 60s. So I said, man, I'm, brother, man, and he says, he said, it'll be good for you, Jim. He said, I promise you, it'll be good for you. And um, he says, look, he says, um, I want you to go in. I want you to uh, go there and, and try it for three weeks. He says, and in three weeks, if you're not happy, he says, um, you just pick up the phone. And he says, uh, you, you know, you got your job back here. Come right back here. And uh, he says, in fact, leave your family here until school's out. And if you like it up there, then you move your family there. If you don't, come back here. You can start work here in three weeks, you know. And I says, well, you can't beat that deal. Well, then after it started sinking in, you know, and uh, uh, the thing was I had to be there the following uh, uh, Monday, you know. Or the following, I'm sorry, this was on a Monday. The, the, I had to be there the following Thursday of that week, you know. So, so uh, I remember I worked uh, um, Dallas uh, um, uh, that Monday night. Tuesday I was in Fort Worth, which is, they're, they're like twin cities, you know. It's like Minneapolis and St. Paul, they're, they're right together. And Wednesday, uh, they, they, I didn't go to San Antonio, which was a shot, because Thursday morning I was flying out to uh, Washington, D.C., uh, for WWWF, Vince McMahon, and um, so, uh, but it sunk in that week, you know, and all the boys were up uh, congratulating me, man, you know, Killer Kowalski and, uh, you know, um, um, uh, Tor Tanaka, Johnny Valentine, man, you know, Wahoo McDaniel, they're all, man, hugging me, and man, man, what a great kid, brother, man, you're going to make a lot of money up there, you know, and Oh, my goodness, you know, and so, you know, it's really sinking in, man. Everybody wants to go there, you know, uh, and, and uh, so, hey, I went there, brother, and uh, I fell in love with it, you know, of course, in three weeks. It, I never called it Fritz, nothing. I brought my family in and, uh, um, and had a great run there. Talk about your first meeting with uh, Mr. McMahon Sr. How'd that go? Yeah, uh, the, the first uh, Thursday, they did... Um, uh, uh, we did TV out of uh, uh, um, Washington, D.C. every Thursday. So um, uh, I, would, I got off the plane, got a cab there, man, and uh, to the address, you know, where, where their office was. And I was uh, supposed to report there. And uh, uh, I, I, I walk in, and the uh, first guy I, I, I seen uh, at the coffee shop downstairs in, a, in a, in the um, hotel where, where WWWF uh, wrestling office was, was Captain Lou Abano. We well, wasn't Captain then, it was just Lou Abano. In fact, I gave him Captain years, years later, his name Captain. But um, uh, Lou uh, uh, had a cup of, cup of coffee and he was going up. And I recognized Lou Abano because of the, all the publicity. You know, if you're in New York, you'd get all the publicity from the magazines. and. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, it, j just to prove that I was there 15 months that first year, and I was on like 12 different covers, you know, of magazines, uh, you know, in, in uh, late, uh, early 70s, in 1970. So, Captain, I recognized him, and of course, I'm standing here with two bags and bleach, bleach blonde hair, you know, and so he knows I'm one of the boys. He didn't know who I was, but I knew who he was, and and he says, uh, hey, follow me, kid, you know, so I, I follow him up to the elevator to the uh, uh, door, and uh, it says WWWF, you know, Worldwide Wrestling Federation on the door, and uh, uh, who opened the door was Gorilla Monsoon, Gino uh, Morella, which uh, I became a great, great friends with, man, God bless him, he's up there in the ring in the sky, you know, now, but... Uh, um, he uh, shook his, put his hand out, man, and, uh, you know, a gorilla of 400 pounds, he was a monster, man. You know, he had a big hand. He, you know, the, uh, Andre the Giant probably had a, the only bigger hand than gorilla had, you know. And, um, but he, he, he says, welcome, welcome, Jimmy. Uh, and he said, he introduced me to Arnold Scolan, which was sitting there in the uh, waiting room. And uh, 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 um, Angelo Savoldi was there. And, and, and these were the agent, agents at that time. And uh, um, he says, uh, Vince is uh, expecting you, Jimmy. And um, so uh, uh, Gorilla uh, went on in and, and uh, told Vince that I was out. And, and Vince says, you know, send him in. And uh, so I, I walked. He says, uh, Vince is, you know, ready for you. So I walked in, and Vince is sitting there doing paperwork, and he's got his glasses, uh, you know, on his nose, and he looks over his glasses, you know, and, and he says, um, Jimmy Valiant, Vince McMahon. <laughs> you know, he shook my hand, and he says, um, you come from a man that I admire, Fritz Von Erich, and he says, um, welcome to uh, yeah, New York, you know, welcome to our territory. and. Uh, uh, Vince, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, says, uh, uh, let me show you who you'll be working with. And, and I, he showed me the schedule for the next three weeks. I'm scheduled against the guy uh, that he had down, the, the, the Black Demon. His name was uh, Tony Nero. And uh, I, I just, you know, I was a rugged, uh, I was a, a bad guy, you know, and I, I liked that, you know, um, at that time. Fritz, uh, uh, had me, you know, working, uh, you know, uh, uh, instead of a crowd pleaser, you know, and uh, I said, is this a, a black demon? Is he a bad guy or, you know, a good guy? What was, and he says, no, he says, uh, he says, we want you as a crowd pleaser, you know, and he says, that's why we need a real young, good looking kid, you know, and uh, that's why we called for you. And Fritz said, uh, you have uh, he had had you, and you know that's why you're here. And he says, "Is there a problem with that?" And I says, um, "I said, man, I said, you know, I, I'm more comfortable. I want to, I want to heal. You know, I want to be rough. You know, and and uh, y you know, here I am, man. <laughs> you know, telling this millionaire and telling Vince McMahon, everybody wants to go there. That I don't, you know, I'm not happy with what he's doing, and that's not how business is done. You know." Uh, but but he says, look, he says, look, Jim, he says, we need uh, you to do this at this time. He says, but if you get over, you know, with the people and if you start drawing money for our company, he says, um, he says, in six months, he says, I'll switch you around. He says, and I'll make you some big money, man. And um, so uh, at that time, in fact, when Fritz uh, told me I was going to go to New York, he says, you're making 400 here. He says, you're going to make $500 a week there. You know, so that's another $100 a week raise. But now Vince tells me if I can get over, and they'll help me get over, but it's still up to the individual. Uh, if you get over, then he's going to make you some big money, you know. So um, I tell you guys, you know, uh, Vince McMahon, uh, I worked for him three different times uh, after that. Uh, uh, always, I stayed over a year, and uh, whatever he says, it, you can take it to the bank. I mean, it's gold. You know, uh, he was such a honorable and such a gentleman. And uh, of course, he gave me my break. You know, uh, here I'm a young kid working Madison Square Garden. You know, where 
Uh, that's the biggest uh, venue. Every major act, uh, I don't care what it is, singer, I mean, from Elvis Presley, you know, to, to whoever, they, they want to perform in the garden. You know, this was the biggest in the world, you know, the biggest convention. Everything went to Madison Square Garden, you know. And uh, here I am, just a young kid, man, you know, uh, and, and working in the garden. And, and so, so, so in six months to the day, uh, Vince, man, he must have put it in his book that day. Six months to the day, uh, I was tag team with Chief J Strongbow, and uh, we were uh, the, the big, uh, you know, crowd pleasing tag team. And uh, um, I turned on Chief. Chief uh, taught me his Indian the sleeper hold. I, I, I turned on him, used the sleeper hold on the Chief, and um, then I went on and had a, a great run with. Uh, uh, Pedro Morales, the WWF uh, world champion, and it was like overnight. I went from making like $500 a week to $1,500 a week. And uh, brother, it was exactly what uh, uh, Vince McMahon said, and um, it, it just happened, and it just, you know, of course changed my life. And, and you know, uh, a lot of guys, um, I'm just a country boy, you know. A lot of guys' money, uh, success, you know, it would blow them away. And I've seen it happen, you know. And um, at, at this time, man, now I'm on top in Madison Square Garden. On top, I'm, I'm in, uh, you know, all the magazine covers, man, you know. Uh, handsome Jimmy Valiant, you know. And, and, and uh, man, $1,500 a week, you know. Uh, it, it, it just blows some people away, but hey, I wouldn't allow it, you know, and the reason, because I didn't believe my own publicity, you know, I'd look at the stories, I'd read the stories, but it didn't go to my head, so if, if, if this will blow you away, it's success or money overnight when it happens so fast, man, you know, you, you just get hard to deal with and it just, um, it just didn't happen to me. You also got paired up with, uh, you also got paired up with uh, the Grand Wizard. And uh, was it Bobby Harmon? You guys were using music. Talk about, talk about that a little bit. You bet, yes. Uh, the Grand Wizard, uh, Ernie Roth, uh, he, uh, uh, I met him in the, in the late 60s um, uh, up there in Detroit. He was the manager uh, for the Sheik. Uh, and and uh, uh, he was now up in, in New York uh, with Vince. And, and uh, uh, he um, also uh, managed uh, another wrestler, uh, Beautiful Bobby. Uh, not uh, beautiful Bobby Eaton that came years later, which I love Bobby Eaton. He's a great guy, a great friend of mine. Uh, but this was beautiful Bobby Harmon. And uh, Vince teamed us up uh, there at that time, 1970, 71 by then. Um, and and uh, 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 the Grand Wizard, he, he wanted something special for this. And uh, we both had long robes and a long blonde hair, and we strut around, man. And he remembered uh, uh, in the 50s when TV just came out, and Gorgeous George um, came out to uh, music uh, uh, to on the TV, uh, but never to the arenas. And he only did it a few times. So, but uh, Ernie Roth, the Grand Wizard, remembered this, and. Uh, so uh, he okayed it with Vince, and uh, so me and Bobby was the first ever to come out in, in the wrestling ring uh, in Madison Square Garden, Boston Garden, Philadelphia, you know, wherever we'd go uh, to music. And uh, it got over so strong. And um, this was like 1971. And then in 1977, I, I remembered this, Jimmy Hart and uh, we, uh, we went and uh, uh, cut a couple records. Son of a Gypsy, uh, uh, Jimmy wrote that song and did the music, I sung it. Uh, uh, then uh, we had to have an other side, so um, uh, I wrote, uh, he got what it takes, and, and he wrote the music heart to that. So we did our record, and then I did another record, 714, which I wrote. But anyway, I would come out to Son of a Gypsy in Memphis, you know, and, and um, so this was something no one ever done. And, and um, got over so strong because music was, man, it'll make you dance and make you get up and boogie woogie, you know, man, you know, make you start clapping your hands and, you know, make you smile, make you feel good, you know. And, and um, so, so uh, 
uh, after I, uh, you know, I was there in 77 and, and 78 and we were coming, I was going out to meet, then Lawler seen it and Dundee seen it and Austin Idol seen it, all these Memphis stars, you know, so they started to come out to music. And then uh, I left and, and went other places, back to New York, and, and we didn't, I didn't go to music no more. And then in 1980, 81, I went to uh, Crockett Corporation, and, and, and um, uh, I remembered all of this again, and that's when the Boogie Woogie Man, you know, was, was born, and, and I came out to music then. Talk about after your run with the WWWF, you kind of went back to Bruiser's. You were managed by a pretty boy, Bobby Haney. Right. And that's when the Valiant Brothers were born. Talk about how the Valiant Brothers were born and how you got, uh, how Johnny came in and the first match you guys had, you were the, the champs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, uh, this was like 1973, and um, uh, I was uh, managed by pretty boy Bobby Heenan and uh, was working for AWW uh, Bruiser's uh, Wrestling Federation with uh, um, Wilbur Snyder. And, and um, uh, we would go to uh, 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 the Bear Man. We worked Detroit, and then we'd go across the uh, uh, Toronto, uh, 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 Ontario, uh, London, Ontario, uh, uh, across the border there in, uh, from Detroit, and we'd wrestle on Sunday afternoon uh, for the Bear Man, uh, Dave McKegney. And uh, he'd only run in the summer. Uh, because it's such, you know, harsh winters in Canada, and, and, and we would wrestle at the um, ice arena. So in the summer, th they weren't playing hockey, so th they were, uh, f uh, you know, uh, th they were free to uh, rent out, so he'd rent that out. And, and uh, he'd always have his, you know, girls and midgets, and he'd, he'd have a bear, that's what we call him, bear man, his bear is there. But he'd also have, bring in a, uh, uh, some of the boys from the United States and um, to work the territory. We never worked territory. We'd only go there once a month uh, when we worked Detroit and uh, we'd stay over and then go uh, to uh, work uh, that afternoon show in, in London. And um, so ja uh, Bobby Heenan was wanting to go to the uh, um, AWA, uh, Vern Gagne's territory, and, uh, but uh, uh, Dick the Bruiser said, well, you got to replace yourself, it tells Bobby, with another good heel, you know, and you, you can't leave until I get a replacement. So he's racking his brain because, man, he's wanting to get out of Indianapolis, you know, and, and um, uh, he says, uh, man, um, I, I, w what if we get a partner for you, you know, and I said, hey, that's cool, Bobby, yeah, whatever you want. I'm trying to help Bobby, too, you know, he wants to leave, he, you know, he can leave, man. You know, I was happy there. I, I lived right there in Hammond, and uh, Indianapolis only 150 miles, you know, from Hammond. And, um, he says, man, remember that big blonde kid, that good body up there in, in, uh, in uh, uh, London, Ontario? And I says, yeah, 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 Johnny, J Johnny Sullivan, he was wrestling under, you know. And, and he says, what if, what if we make him a, a, a valiant brother? And uh, I said, beautiful brother, good. So. Uh, he ran it by Bruiser, and, and so the next three weeks we got on TV and says, uh, you know, hey, handsome Jimmy, wait till you see handsome Jimmy Valiant's brother, luscious Johnny Valiant. He's coming, man. Yeah, yeah you know, we're going to work, uh, you know, in, in the Expo in Indianapolis, man, in the, in the amphitheater in Chicago. We was doing all these promos for three weeks, you know, and, man, having the people, you know, j just talking about Johnny, you know. And we had it all hyped up, man. And when Johnny did come in, as my and, and Bobby uh, managed us, when he did come in and walk down the aisle for the first time, they hated him, man. You know, you know, I'd get on the interview. And I'd say, hey, you know, there's no difference between uh, handsome Jimmy and my brother Luscious Johnny. I said, the only difference is that, hey, I'm not Luscious. I'm just handsome. And my brother, he's not handsome. He's just Luscious. You know, you know, there's no difference between the Valiant brothers and. And uh, Bobby was uh, uh, our manager, brother, man, and we walked down and um, we uh, beat um, uh, Moose Cholak and, and, and um, uh, Bobby, I, I mean, uh, uh, Wilbur Snyder for the uh, tag team belts the uh, first time in Indianapolis. And brother, hey, the Valiant brothers, hey, they were, they were made overnight. Not yes, yes. And then uh, the second time for me to go into New York, only this time I came in with the, uh, Johnny 
as the Valiant Brothers, and uh, uh, the Grand Wizard still held my contract, so he uh, sold, uh, and they wheeled and dealed, uh, traded a couple men, and some money was changed hands or whatever the deal was, but uh, uh, I ended up uh, with uh, Lou Abano as our, the Valiant Brothers manager, and, and um, Lou loved the tag teams. He loved the tag teams, and um, uh, we went in, and uh, we worked uh, uh, the uh, world, uh, WWWF World Tag Team Champions at that time was a uh, uh, Tony Gurria and Dean Ho, and um, we worked them, and, and uh, we beat them on TV for the champs and for the belts, and um, me and Johnny stayed 15 months with Captain Lou. He wasn't captain yet, as Lou Abano's our manager, um, and at that time, we held the belts the longest in the history of the WWWF, uh, which is WWE now, of course. Um, and, and I'm sure it's been broken now, but we, we held them for 15 months, and, and um, it, it was a great run, great run. You guys were a big deal in New York. I mean, they had everybody coming after you. Bruno, I mean, that was a big deal. I mean, y'all guys were money. I mean, box office draws. Yeah, yeah, it was a hot run, man. You know, uh, um, we, uh, the money came, you know, of course, uh, we beat uh, Dean Ho and Tony Gurria, so, they chased the Valiant Brothers, you know, everywhere. And, and for the next nine months, man, we wrestled them seven days a week, you know. And, and of course, then, uh, man, they'd work us over, brother, but we'd always walk out with the belts and had so much heat, you know. And the heat was real, you know. Uh, uh, me and Johnny, man, we'd take our cars. We'd have to hide our cars, you know, because uh, the fans, if they seen us in a car, man, they'd, they'd uh, uh, key it, you know, they'd, they'd scratch it, the, our <laughs> new Cadillacs up, man, whatever we was driving, man, and, and, and uh, you'd ruin our cars, you know, they'd break the windows out, they'd flatten our tires, they'd do anything. Uh, man, I mean, they, they'd throw uh, co hot coffee on us going to ring or beer, and I, we, they'd burn us with their cigarettes, and, you know, it's a serious thing, you know, I've been stabbed, and, and you, you know, j just getting in and out of the ring, and, and, um, uh, it, it was really a hot deal. They, 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 they uh, had uh, Vince uh, uh, seen, you know, how hot the Valiant Brothers were, you know. This was 1994 at this time, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 1974. 1974 at this time, and, and um, Vince uh, always had, uh, at that time, uh, Bruno San Martino was the uh, world champion, and, and he says, um, you know, uh, always Bruno was a single. Uh, he never teamed up with no one because he was their the, uh, world champion. And um, it, it was a, such a hot deal to, uh, that we had two shots with Bruno on top uh, uh, as uh, w with um, Chief J. Strongbow as his partner uh, trying to get the tag belts from the Valiant Brothers, you know. and. Um, so it was a real, real deal. And, but not only were Bruno and, and, and uh, this was their dream team, you know. If they can't do it, nobody can, you know. And, and, um, but we were lucky enough, man, each time to walk out, you know, some way, uh, you know, of course cheating, and, uh, you know, but we'd walk out with, the, with them belts and just got more heat and heat. And another, uh, you know, they'd, they'd team up guys like Putski and, and, and uh, Santana. They'd team up guys like, uh, um, you know, um, my, uh, Gorilla Monsoon, you know, and, and Victor Rivera, man, you know, just so many combinations they'd throw at us, you know, the Valiant Brothers. Talk about uh, when the date with the Valiants. What are your memories of the actual date and how that all came about? Yeah, we, uh, uh, Bill After, he was uh, the senior uh, 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 editor and, and the senior, you, you know, uh, uh, w with four or five different wrestling magazines, you know, at the time, and uh, uh, this was the wrestler, uh, uh, and, and, and then they had Inside Wrestling. They had many wrestling magazines, but uh, the wrestler, um, we, we made the cover. Uh, Win your date with the Valiant Brothers and Captain Lou, you know, and and um, so uh, you'd have to send in a. a, a uh, a uh, card or, or a letter, so many words, and why do you want to date with the Valiant Brothers? <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> this was all, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> this was 
this was all to be taking place in New York, uh, you know, going out on the town with the Valiant Brothers and the captain. And, and uh, man, we got some letters. That, <laughs> it was so comical, you know, because uh, we, we had uh, housewives, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, wanting to leave their husbands, and we we had guys uh, dressing up like girls, or or I don't know, maybe they were uh, guy, guys that had operations. I don't know, man, but you can tell it was guys, you know, sending pictures and letters to us, and oh, it, it was wild, you know. But um, it was a big deal, uh, and, and they got so many cards and letters, and um, the the um, uh, the wrestler uh, the, the following week. Uh, we were back on the cover and with the date. And um, it, it showed uh, uh, the girl that won and, and it showed us uh, taking her out on the town and uh, it was like a eight, eight, eight page spread. And um, it was a, a good, good uh, a gimmick, you know, good for the Valiant Brothers and also, of course, good for the magazine because it sold, uh, th that's what it's all about, you know, is, uh, uh, is money. After that, your run with uh, Vince was up again, and you guys went all over the place. Tell me the places you went, and then after that, uh, Johnny left. Yeah, I um, had the greatest run in New York in 74, 73, 74. And um, then in 75, um, we went to uh, uh, Minnesota uh, for AWA and, and uh, Vern Gagne. Uh, me and Johnny, everywhere we went, we'd be the... The, the, the world tag team champions. Uh, uh, we had a big feud with uh, um, uh, Hilarity Axe Henning and, and Joel LaDuke. They went as the Lumberjacks. And, and uh, of course, the other tag team there was uh, uh, Greg Vine, uh, Gagne and uh, Vern Sun and, and uh, 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 Brunzel. They were the high flyers, and they had uh, quite a few good tag team. Of course, Crusher, you know, was there, and, and, and uh, uh, Nick Bockwinkle, uh, you know, and, and uh, pretty boy Bobby Heenan was there. He was going then as the brain, the brain Bobby Heenan. And uh, um, we uh, uh, had a great run there, nine months, man, you know, and uh, then we uh, negotiated uh, uh, to go to uh, – um, uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, and and that was for for Jim Barnett, and uh, we uh, we uh, was the uh, Georgia uh, Tag Team Champions there, um, and we stayed there, you know, another nine months or so, and um, then we went to uh, San Francisco for to Roy Shires uh, territory, and uh, of course we we were uh, we we beat. Uh, uh, Pepper Gomez and, and uh, Pat Patterson for their titles. So we, we had the tag team titles there, and, and the Kangaroos was out there. There's a lot of good tag team. Years ago, um, uh, they, they had uh, uh, good tag team uh, territories, you know, uh, uh, everywhere. You know, it, it was more than you see today. You know, the tag teams, um, you, you, you do see, of course, they have, you know, tag teams, but not like years ago they had their own division and um, I mean in, in one night you'd see maybe two or three of the matches was tag team matches and uh, very exciting um, I, I like tag team. I like to be single too I, I liked either way but tag team was a uh, me and Johnny was together five years and um, it was a very very exciting time you know in, in both of our lives you know um, but um, Right after he left, you got the call. You're working for a bruiser again by yourself, but uh, you got loaned out to Memphis for Jerry Jarrett. Talk about going in there and uh, kind of taking Memphis by storm. Yeah, I, uh, uh, Johnny, uh, um, you know, we, we uh, left San Francisco, and, and uh, Johnny was um, had a few personal prob problems at home, and, and he had to take care of it. And he said, Boy, he, he, and he called me. Uh, uh, jive man, he says, he says Jive, uh, I, I gotta go home and you know take care of business, and I understand my man, and and he says, I, I, man, I might be back in six weeks or I might be six months, and I said, well, that's cool, man, you know, take care of what you gotta do, and I understand, and 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 uh, so um, I picked up the phone, and uh, again, you know, we had no managers, you know, uh, we had managers, but no no. Uh, 
uh, personal managers that took care of our affairs. You know, we all took care of our own bookings, our own, uh, if you needed help, the promoter would help you, you know, to find another place, you know. Um, we, we would leave territories. You'd only there, you know, six, eight weeks, uh, months, I mean, you know, and, and you'd make major moves, you know. Um, uh, my oldest daughter, Robin, time she was uh, in eighth grade, she, she, she was uh, enrolled in uh, 12 different schools, you know. So, so that's how many times you have to move, you know. So we're used to that, and we, we take care of our business, you know. And uh, so I picked up the phone and called uh, uh, Indianapolis and talked to Bruiser and um, told him our thing. Johnny's going uh, home for a while, and, uh, you know, um, I, I need to come in and whatever you need, and bop, bop, bop. So he uh, worked me as a single. And um, uh, while I was there, uh, this was in 1977 now, and uh, working the single, uh, they brought in um, uh, 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 Duke George, Major Duke George managed me at this time. And uh, so uh, I had single shots with Dick the Bruiser everywhere, and, and Pepper Gomez, and uh, Sailor Art Thomas, and uh, I was on top with, uh, you know, Moose Cholak, uh, Paul Christie, uh, 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 Pepper Gomez. Uh, uh, Cowboy Bob Ellis, these were all the major stars that in, in Annapolis and, and uh, I was their, their head heel and man and I, man, I was having matches with all of them, programs, you know. Um, it was a great run, you know, I, I loved it, I was home, you know, uh, and, and um, we, in fact we ran Hammond, Indiana, you know, where I was raised and it was so exciting because we'd run to Hammond Civic Center and People thought that here I, a boy from New York City, you know, they'd uh, handsome Jimmy Valiant from New York City, Bob Bandit, boo in there, throwing stuff. Man, they hated me, you know, and they didn't, uh, well, some knew, but the, the regular fans, because I never um, would go out, you know, with my family, you know, uh, because I w was a heel. I didn't want my, my three daughters to be teased at school. I couldn't go to church with them. I couldn't go to uh, school with them because uh, I didn't want them to have a hard time so I wouldn't be seen plus I'd be on the road all week anyway and and when I'd come in at night man I I wouldn't even go out around you know where I lived you know uh, much you know and um, you know it, 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 it was something that uh, just part of our life then you know because it wasn't cool now it's cool to be a heel Man, if you're a bad guy, everybody, yeah, man, if you're a good guy, yeah, they, man, they, they cheer for everybody. But before, boy, you know, it, they didn't cheer for you. But uh, uh, here I'm at the, in, in Hammond, Indiana, and, and uh, you know, the majority of people I'm working with, Dick the Bruiser in there in the ring, man, and we're bleeding, and I'm punching them, and I'm got the knucks, I'm hitting them, and man, and they're, they're wanting to kill me, you know, and they don't know, man. I, I graduated from Hammond Tech just down the street from Hammond Civic Center. In fact, it's on Seoul Avenue. It's on the same road, you know. And um, they think I'm from New York. You big bum, man. Oh, man, they hated me, you know. And they didn't know I was a, 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 a Hammond boy. And when I was, you know, 8, 10 years old, I'd go over there and I'd shoot marbles, man. I'd play basketball in, in, right there where I was wrestling. I'd, I'd swim there and I'd do my activities there, you know, like all the other Hammond boys, you know. But uh, it, it was pretty cool. Talk about going to Memphis. First night in, when the, when the Southern Heavyweight title. Yeah, uh, it, it, uh, Jerry Jarrett um, um, called... Uh, Bruiser and, and said, you know, uh, Lawler is uh, um, retiring uh, uh, his belt. He, he's beat everybody. Uh, they're going to put his belt up in a round robin tournament. Uh, and um, uh, we, we need, uh, you know, uh, a top heel. You know, uh, they called uh, Florida. They called a couple other places for another, you know, different uh, territories to come in just for the tournament. Just for one night. He was just on loan for one night, you know. And uh, Bruiser says, well, he says, I got uh, uh, Ivan Koloff here. He says, I got the handsome Jimmy Valiant. I got uh, uh, Ernie the Cat Lad. 
Uh, he was telling the big heels that he had in the territory, and we were doing great there, man. We had some of the best talent in 1973. Um, I, I mean, sorry, in 1977, uh, we had some of the greatest talent in, in, in the history of WWA. And, and um, so uh, uh, Jared uh, says, uh, yeah, um, you know, can you send handsome here, you know? So, so um, he told me, so I, man, I, I made an interview, I told an interview, you know, I, 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 I kind of interviewed to be shown on the TV for, for the following Monday, you know, and uh, uh, Saturday for, for the following Monday Memphis Coliseum show for the tournament. Man, I'm talking to all the people on TV, and I, I'm telling, hey, all you rednecks, all, you know, you tobacco chewing, you know, all you, you know, this one horse town of Memphis, man, you know, and, and I'm putting all the Tennessee people down, you know, and, and the people don't know I, I'm a Tennessee boy, you know, and, you know, I'm from New York City, man, and hey, I'm going to come in and beat whoever's in that, uh, you know, child play. I'm going to take the belt, man, and I'm going to take it back to New York City, and uh, you'll never see me, and you'll never see the Southern Heavyweight Championship belt again either, you know. And uh, I'm putting them all down. I'm talking, hey, all you, uh, you know, uh, you raise all your kids on this wick, man. You know, you're all on welfare. You know, you're all inbred. You're all, man, I'm just really ripping them, man, you know. And and all my bro all my cousins and all my, <laughs> my, my, uh, uh, uncles and aunts, you know, man, they, you know, we came from real big families back then, you know, and uh, my mother's side, there was like um, uh, uh, 12 children, you know, and my father's side, uh, 10 children, you know, and I got all my cousins, everybody lives there in Tennessee, and, but um, anyway, it got over, and I got there, and, and uh, uh, the, the first match, you know, um, they had me uh, going against uh, superstar Bill Dundee, and uh, he was, man, he's, he was right up next to a Lawler. You know, he was their top guy, you know. And, and um, we uh, went to uh, a 10-minute ten ten draw, you know. Nobody won. We went to time limit. So the referee flipped a coin, and I was lucky enough to win the, uh, you know. The, so I, I, I continued on, and Dundee was out of the tournament. And then I beat someone else, and then I, I got a bye somewhere. And it came down to there was four left. Um, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, um, so so uh, I, I I wrestled uh, some of the other guys they brought in was Jack Briscoe and 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 uh, 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 Bobo Brazil and 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 uh, so uh, I ended up at my semi against Bobo and and I slipped over Bobo cheating some way and 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 then wrestling too um, I mean Mr Wrestling and, uh, was there uh, and he won. So, so it came down to, and this was Dickie Steinborn, you know, uh, as, as Mr. Rest, Mr. Wrestling. And I know there was a Tim Woods that wrestled, the, you know, Mr. Wrestling, and, and of course, the Johnny Walker, rubber man, he was wrestling too. But uh, Dickie Steinborn, big star, big star. Um, he, uh, he was uh, the Mr. Wrestling, and uh, it came down to us too. And um, so, uh, you know, uh, during the during the, the time after after I uh, you know uh, continued on to the final, and then um, Jared called me in, off, in his in his office there you know, and he says man he said handsome can you come back next Sunday uh, next uh, Monday and I says I don't know you got to check it with Dick Bruiser he's my boss you know, and he says well what's the chances I says well chances are good because we don't wrestle on Monday, I said I got to be in in um, uh, Indianapolis to do TV interviews Tuesday mornings, but, um, you know, uh, Monday's free. And he said, okay. Well, anyway, I went out and I beat uh, Dickie Steinborn, Mr. Wrestling, for the title. And then I, I did an interview, and I told him, I says, you know, guys, I said I was going to leave with the t I, I I did what I told him I, I was going to do, all you hillbillies. I says, I, I beat the best you had, man. And I says, I, and I told you I was going back to New York, you know, with the title, and uh, you'll never see the title again, never see Handsome Jimmy again. But I says, you know, this was fun, man. This was fun, you know. And I says, uh, I'm gonna come back next week, you know, and uh, and uh, I'll beat someone else, you know. And and uh, 
So, so what they did, they had a rematch between me and Mr. Wrestling. And uh, the, the thing was, the following week, Lawler came back because uh, he was doing music then. He, he, put the, he quit to do uh, music, and Jimmy Hart just came on the scene, and he helped Lawler do music at that time, uh, do a, 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 a couple records. And, and so he was going to put a free concert on for all the uh, Memphis people and, uh, that day, that next uh, when, uh, Monday. And uh, so I came back, and I put my title on the line again, and when Lawler did his uh, concert in, uh, in, in the middle at the inter after intermission uh, part, and uh, man, he had the stage there, and Lawler came up there. And before Lawler came on, I went out there, and, and they had the band there, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy Hart's band, and they had the Carver McCarver sisters there singing back up, and it was a big deal, man. And uh, I, I went out, and uh, I says, uh, Hey, nobody wants to hear Jerry Lawler sing. You know, they, they want to hear Handsome Jimmy sing, you know. And uh, I got the sunglasses on, man, the blonde hair, and they had the black lights on. And, you know, it just, it, it just uh, uh, you know, everything just glowed, you know. And, and I says, uh, at that time, the, the uh, real hot country song was, uh, uh, you took a fine time to uh, lose, uh, uh, leave me Lucille, you know, by uh, Kenny Rogers. And um, so I tried, I, I talked to the back, I said, hey, you hillbilly, can you play that uh, new hot song of Kenny Rogers that might, took a fine time? And uh, you know, everybody's booing, they're throwing stuff, man. So Jerry Jarrett and some of the uh, uh, guards come out, you know, with uh, Eddie Marlin, and they come out and say, handsome, you, you can't, this is Jerry Lawler's, you're only here to wrestle in the main event tonight. You know, and I says, you can't do this, man. You know, this is Lawler's last appearance in the Memphis Coliseum, and uh, you're going to have to leave. And I said, you know what, Jared? He says, I didn't want to. I didn't want to sing for these hillbillies anyway, man. And I just dropped the mic and I strutted off. And so then Lawler came on, man. Jimmy Hart brought him on, and Lawler came on. He sang a song, and he got ready to sing his new uh, single hit. You know that he's he's promoting now and. Uh, so at that time, man, I couldn't take no more of it, man. I'm hearing this, and I run onto the stage, you know, and I grab one of the guy's guitar, and I hit Lawler in the head with the guitar, and it exploded, you know. And, and man, I put the boots to Lawler. Man, he's down. He's bleeding. And, and uh, man, the band, they're just standing there in shock, man. They look like a, a deer in, in, in the headlights, man. They didn't know what to do. And, here comes uh, the security guards out. Here comes some of the wrestlers, and here comes Jared Jared out again. And man, oh man, you know they got me back off stage and out of there. And and uh, the only reason they didn't, you know, suspend me or or, or fire me, man, because of the Coliseum sold out, and and you know to come to see Lawler and 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 uh, see me lose the, the the strap that night, you know. Uh, so so he says, uh, man, hey. Just go ahead, have your match, and get out of here, you know. And 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 uh, so so uh, uh, I went out, and and I, hey, I went over again. I beat uh, uh, Mr. Wrestling again, and uh, I cheated, beat him again. Had more heat. Went in there, did another interview. I said, I'm coming back one more time, man. I says, and I don't care who it is, Mickey Mouse or Andre the Giant. Get someone in here that can, you know, give me some competition, or you'll never see me again, you know. I'm taking a bell, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm saying this every week, you know, and I, I says, you know, I'm tired of all this, uh, this, you know, one horse town of Memphis, Tennessee. So um, I leave, and, and then the next Saturday, uh, they're, they're finding out who's going to wrestle me, you know, and, and man, they had, uh, you know, some big stars there, you know, all wanting to, you know, wrestle me for the title, and, and, and right on the end of the program, uh, Jerry Jarrett comes out and he says, well, we got it. He says, here's, here's Handsome Jimmy's opponent for next Saturday, Mon uh, Monday night, 8 o'clock, Memphis Coliseum. And brother, they brought Jerry the King Lawler back out, came back out of retirement, had the crown on, and he says, nobody 
Nobody does this to me, you know. Hey, I don't care, Handsome Jimmy. Hey, I'm coming back. Hey, I'm coming back for my Southern Heavyweight Championship belt. Hey, I'm coming back for you. I'm going to ride you out on the rail, man. Hey, you were going to get rid of you. We don't like your kind here, you know, in the South, man. Bop, 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 bop. And, brother, the next Monday, Coliseum sold out, and me and Jerry Lawler connected there. And for the six, next six months, we wrestled every, every Monday at the Memphis Coliseum, man, and jammed it. A couple of big things from that was he, uh, a couple of things, he burned your face. Talk about that, remember that? Yeah, next six months, man, we had every type of match you can think of. Uh, you know, they had, uh, uh, my goodness, we had uh, cage matches, tarred and feathered matches, you know, scaffold matches. Uh, he won my uh, uh, Corvette, man. I, I brought a Corvette in, had the Big Apple on it from New York, you know. He uh, won suitcases full of cash. Uh, man, he won everything from me. You know, he had the belt and, uh, uh, you know, he just uh, beat me pillar to post. But I'd always keep that heat, man, you know, and, and we continued. Then we went into uh, tag matches, went into six-man tags. We went into every match you could think of, you know. Uh, so finally, um, uh, he was getting ready to wrestle Harley Race as the world ch uh, heavyweight champion, you know, came in. Uh, couple times a year or so uh, uh, just before that he he threw fire and he burnt my face man and and and, and a brother man that got my eye and I had an eye patch on and burnt my face good and and I, I looked in the camera I said Jerry Lawler nobody does this as a handsome Jimmy you know I says brother if I see you walking down the street man hey I'll run you over in, in my car you know I'll come right on the sidewalk I, he said if I see you eating in a restaurant I'll stab you with a fork man he said nobody does this you know you know it, it was a serious deal you know uh, to handsome Jimmy and and um, so uh, I went home to heal up, and uh, he wrestled Harley Race uh, that, that next week. And, and uh, they went to our Broadway, which is a time limit. They went a whole hour, you know, time limit. And, and the following week, they came back in a 90-minute a match, you know. So I wasn't on the card, man. And, and, and I flew in myself, man, and, and, and I told the cab driver to, to, to uh, man, leave that meter running, brother. I won't be long. He, he, I got in there, you know, when I figured Lawler was going to be in the ring against Harley Race, and, and uh, man, I stayed in the shadows, you know, of uh, no one knew I was there. And, and, and um, just as, you know, Lawler had Harley beat, you know, for the pin, man, and, uh, man, I grabbed a, a big bottle, a quart bottle of something out of the garbage can, man. I ran down the, the aisle, you know, not the aisle where uh, I was in the other side of the building, another different aisle, not from the dressing room. And I ran in, man, and I brought that quart bottle, man, a big bottle, beer bottle, whatever it was, Pepsi bottle, I don't know what it was, it, over his head and busted, man. And, man, it cut my hand, cut his head. And I, I, I grabbed the, the neck of the bottle boy and I swiped him across the chest, cut his chest, and I got his arm, man. And by that time, man, the fans are coming, the police is coming, the, the, the uh, Jerry Jarrett coming, uh, everybody, security, man, there, the ring's filling up, man. And I just dove out of there and got out of there and got in the cab and right back to the airport and flew back out. And um, it was so hot, man, it was so hot, you know, that. Uh, the the, um, uh, the 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 ambulance came, you know. They all the lights came on in the Coliseum, and and Jerry Jarrett laid there, brother, and 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 uh, uh, glass everywhere in the ring, and and of course they were filming this, and it showed man and bleeding from the chest, the arm, the head, and and the ambulance came and they carried him out, and the following Saturday he got on. Uh, TV brother and and he, they zoomed in on they could see where he was sold with the, the 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 stitchers you know the cat gut you know they used to sew people up years ago with and and had all the stitches there and 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 um, it, it, I had death stress on my life it, it, it came to the TV station the Coliseum uh, man they they they, they uh, had to have me back because you know. Uh, Man, Memphis is selling out. You know, Lawler wants his revenge, and um, 
so they used to pick me up at the airport and they'd put me in the uh, back of uh, uh, Buddy, uh, uh, Buddy's car, which was one of the, the old time wrestler, Buddy uh, Peel, uh, Buddy Wayne was his wrestling name. And he put me in the back seat of his Cadillac, covered me up with army blankets, and drive me right into the Coliseum. And he's waving at all the fans, you know, hey, buddy, hey, buddy. But they're all out there once trying to see how I get in every Monday, you know. But they never figure it out. And then afterwards, he'd put me back in there, and he'd drive me back to the airport. And I'd fly out every Monday. I wouldn't even stay over, you know, because I had to do TV uh, interviews uh, in Indianapolis for Bruiser next Tuesday. And uh, But it was a hot deal, brother, man. Eventually, he, he beat you when you were, I guess, going back with uh, Johnny to uh, the WWF again. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, talk about, uh, you guys did some TV tapings and you weren't feeling too well at the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had shots, uh, Vince McMahon and uh, called the Valiant Brothers back. It was, was going to be a, a, a big run he had planned. And <clears throat> we went in twice, uh, did. Um, six tapes, two days, and um, they would go in uh, in three weeks, do six more tapes. And the and, uh, second time I was in there, man, I wasn't feeling real good. And man, I thought I was getting uh, uh, walking pneumonia and a boogie-woogie flu. Man, I was so tired. I couldn't even hold my head up, man. I couldn't raise my arm. I said, man, something wrong with me, brother. And um, I just laid, man, you know, uh, uh, in the dressing room until it was time for me to go out and do a tape or interview and and um, anyway uh, I, I went from there to Lexington, Kentucky uh, to Rupp Arena wrestled and um, uh, the next, uh, this was on a Saturday night and the next day was Sunday, off day and Monday I'm on top in Coliseum Memphis and on the way back uh, to Memphis, you know, brother, uh, I, I just fell apart. I just couldn't move, you know. I just, uh, I was drained, you know. And um, we drove all night. And um, time I got into Memphis, you know, uh, the driver, I was riding with Kenny Wayne and Kenny, and he looked at me, he said, oh, handsome man. He says, your, your eyes are just yellow like mustard, you know. And I, I pulled the visor down, and I looked, man, and and uh, it was John that said it, you know. And uh, so um, I said, take me to the hospital. And so I went and got checked out. And, and uh, the, 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 the doctor says, man, we're full, man. But Hanson, we're going to get a place for you because you got, a, you, you, got uh, you know, uh, hepatitis because he, he, he got the test back. And, and he says, um, I said, I got to make a few phone calls, brother, man. And then, yeah, we'll do that. But... I called the, you know, pay like I called. I told Kenny, I said, get the car, man. I got to get out of here, you know. But um, anyway, I, I had both types, A and B. Um, now they have C. <laughs> and probably I had, I had them all, you know. And, and who knows, brother, we'd bleed every night, brother. You know, we'd bleed every night. And, man, I was living wild times. And, you know, I was doing all type of different uh, recreation drugs and this and that. And, so who knows where this came from, man? You know, hey, bad seafood, oysters, raw, you know, who knows what? Bad water uh, from getting busted open every night, uh, living the fast life, you know, not sleeping and eating right, you know, uh, you know, going days without, you know, proper rest, nutrition. But um, this... Uh, this brother uh, almost did me in, you know, the doctor, uh, I went back uh, to uh, Hammond area and um, went to my own doctor and he said the same thing. He confirmed it, you know, and, and um, he says, you know, you, you need to go in the hospital, but I refused. I just went home because he says, your kids, uh, uh, you know, j j just, um, don't have them eat after you. Uh, it's not contagious uh, for what I had or whatever he said, and and which it wasn't because I stayed home um, three four months and and no one got it. You know, so so he was right there. If there was any choice, I would went to hot. I wouldn't put my family in danger. You know, but um, I, I'd rather be home and than the hospital anyway. I said I, I said what can they do for you in the hospital? 
He says, well, they just put IVs in you and they can give you a B12 shot and, and a gamma goblin shot once a week. I said, well, can you do this in office? You know, yeah. So the only thing I didn't have was the IVs and, and uh, you know, I can do that at home, you know. With, but um, he told my wife um, and my family, he said uh, that he won't make it. He's not going to make it, you know. I went from uh, like 230, 240. The last time he weighed me, I was 100 pounds less, man. I was like 134 pounds or something on a six foot uh, three frame. I'm not big bone, but, you know, medium bone guy, you know. And um, I, I, my liver wouldn't work. It, 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 it wouldn't uh, utilize, it wouldn't, uh, the, the food, you know, whatever I was eating. And, um, but uh, God had his hand on me and he wasn't done with me. He had more uh, in store for me, you know, in my life. And, and um, uh, I, I, I pulled through it and uh, came back. Uh, maybe six months later, and they brought John, they brought uh, 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 Gary Valiant in, and, and uh, his name is John Hill. He was a stopper, Guy Mitchell, his wrestling name, and they made him a, a, a Valiant brother because Vince had so much money invested in me and Johnny, luscious Johnny Handsome Jimmy. Then they brought John, uh, Jerry in as, as gentleman Jerry, so they won the straps. And um, when I came back six months later, then I joined them, and then we did all the six mans, the Valiant Brothers, like the Freebirds did years later. The six six of us would uh, would do um, uh, matches, and, and um, I had my single shots, and it was a good run once I got back on my feet. Soon after uh, Johnny and the Valiant were no more, you went back to. Uh Memphis after Lawler broke his leg, became the third king of Memphis, and I stayed there year and kind of carried the, the territory. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Lawler broke his leg in uh, uh, playing football on Sunday. You know, <laughs> not not nothing in the ring. And and Jared was so hot, man. And he called me and uh, says, "You got to come in, and uh, I'm gonna present you with Lawler's crown. You're gonna be the new king of Memphis." And he explained there was three kings in Memphis wrestling. Of course, the king of Memphis, Elvis Presley, and you know, the, the biggest king of all in, in pop music, rock and roll, man, you know. But there were three kings of Memphis in wrestling, and the first was uh, Jackie Fargo, and then Jerry the King Lawler, and then Handsome Jimmy the third. So they presen presented me with the crown, and uh, yeah, I carried the territory, and I was the man to beat, and uh, just like Lawler was, you know. and. Um, were just like Vern Gagne was in AWA or Dick the Bruiser in AWW, you know, uh, the Sheik in, in, you know, big time wrestling. And so, so you have someone there that you got to knock off the throne. And uh, so while his leg was healing, uh, I was the man. And, and um, it, it was a great run, a great run, man. I enjoyed it and, uh, uh, tremendously. And then you kind of went off and did uh, this Sun Belt Wrestling in Florida. Uh, it was like yeah. Yeah. I uh, uh, left there when when uh, uh, Lawler came back. He was well, man, and and he says, uh, "Hey, Memphis, uh, it's not uh, big enough uh, uh, for two kings of uh, Memphis in the ring, you know, and uh, and uh, either." me or you, you know, we're going to uh, have one match, you know, uh, uh, the winner gets the title, the, the, gets the crown, and he's the king, and the other one leaves, you know. And so we had the big match, and uh, he, he, uh, he beat me, and uh, he, he was the king of Memphis again, and um, uh, I left uh, to go to uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, at, at that time, uh, they were uh, going to start a wrestling uh, or Sun Belt wrestling, um, and and um, uh, Curtis uh, was a big star there years ago, and he was uh, doing the commentating, and uh, uh, Louis Tillette was the uh, the booker, and and um, he worked in the office, and Austin Idol called me and said, uh, you know, if you come in, handsome, he says uh, they're giving me one quarter, 25 percent of the territory. You got 25 percent. 
um, and, and, and uh, Tillet's got 25 and Curtis got 25. So, so this is how it's going to be, you know. And there's no investment. I said, well, you got to move me, man, you know. So they moved me and they, they gave me a, a salary for the, uh, uh, every week, you know, until the territory got rolling. And, and uh, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. But, you know, something, you know, uh, from something, you got something, you know. So I, I had nothing to lose, man. If this thing took off, I had 25% of the territory. You know, I'd be one of the owners, and um, it, it was good. So I stayed there a, a month, and, and Jerry Jarrett calls, and, and they're, they're wanting me out of there because uh, Tampa, Florida, uh, you know, uh, Eddie Graham runs that, and Dusty's up there, and, and, and they run Jacksonville, and they, they, they were afraid if this thing took a foothold, man, take off, and it's going to hurt their business, of course. And, and uh, they're all, all the promoters work together. So we were called like the outlaws, you know, we were the opposition, you know, uh, you know, to them, uh, the establishment. And, and um, you know, they, they all frown on that, you know. And, and uh, I understand that, I understand the business, you know. And uh, he says, uh, handsome, he says, man, he says, if we can get you to leave, he says, uh, then, uh, uh, Austin Idol, he'll probably f leave, and if you two leave, man, that territory won't get a foothold and it'll fold, you know. That's what they're wanting. So um, he, um, he offers me, you know, uh, you can go to Atlanta, you can go to Charlotte, you know, they just want me out of there, you know. So they call Jim Barnett and, and, and everybody, all the promoters are talking and and, and, you know, they're scheming, man, to get me out and get, uh, get Austin out. And, and, and then, you know, they'd have less chance of making it because we were their two big stars, you know. So, um, the, he, hey, Jared sent me money to move, man. You know, he gave me this and that. And, 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 and I made a lot of money with Jerry, Jared, you know, and, 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 and um, uh, Lawler, you know, and, and so, so, hey, I honored that, man, and, and, man, I was only there, mo hey, moving, brother, it's like changing socks or something to me, you know, I, so I made the major move, all the furniture, everything to Florida, you know what I mean, one month, bing, moving to North Carolina, <laughs> Charlotte, so, so uh, they got me in Charlotte, man, you know, and uh, uh, I went in then as um, King James, King James and Alfred uh, uh, Hayes, the Lord Alfred uh, managed me there, I teamed me up with Greg the Hammer Valentine, and we uh, wrestled, uh, uh, you know, a, a, as tag team uh, against um, Ebony Diamond, which is Rocky Johnson, uh, you know, the Rock's father, and and um, he was under a hood. He went as Ebony Diamond, and uh, his partner was Bad Bad Leroy Brown, you know. So uh, that's how that started, man. Is uh, and this was like 1980, 81 or 81. In five minutes, try to tell me you went back to to Jared, and then you come back to uh, Charlotte, and you got Crockett and Oli wanting to meet with you. How about that meeting you had with them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was in uh, uh, Crockett Corporation, and and um, Jerry Jarrett would call every two, three months, you know, or six weeks, or. You know, hey, can we get handsome back? You know, for a shot. You know, to Memphis, and and so they'd fly me in on Monday and fly me back, and so um, I come back, and and then then Jared called. Now he wants me for like three weeks, and uh, so he's telling uh, uh, he's telling Jim Crockett, man, handsome. He's a character. Good guy here, man. They, man, people love him, man. Here, you know, and here I'm a heel there with them, and and um, so uh, I get back, uh, uh, and and they 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 t call me in the office. Uh, Ole Anderson, and and was booking then, and 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 Crockett, and he says, uh, man, why didn't you tell me you was a you know character baby face? You know, why didn't you tell me you was this you know big big. Uh, you know, crowd pleases, uh, you know, character up there. And I said, well, hey, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't think. He says, well, you know, they, they, they said Coliseum sold out last night, and, man, they want you back for three weeks. And he said, we want to do that here. And I said, okay. 
I said, that's cool. He says, uh, but, but we got to change your name, you know. Uh, no more handsome, you know. We want you to be a good guy. And I says, uh, he says, think of it. What, what, what name? Uh, and they're, they're, they're thinking, I'm thinking. I said, how about the Boogie Woogie Man? You know, Jimmy Valiant, but Boogie Woogie Man. He said, he, they look at each other. He said, yeah, okay, that's good. And he said, okay, good, good. He says, I said, hey, I said, listen, let me come out to music. And they said, what? I said, let me come out to music. He says, I, when I'm in Memphis, I come out to music, brother. I get them people, man, dancing in the aisles, and I come out, I kiss and hug, and, man, I'm dancing with them, you know, and it'll get over. He said, okay, okay, what, what kind of song? And at that time, uh, Manhattan Transfer had that hat song, Boy from New York City. I'm from New York City. And I said, boy from New York City. He said, okay, get it, man, and come on back. He says, can you grow a beard? I says, yeah, man. Throw your razor away, start a beard, and I says, okay. He said, they want you for three weeks. Get out of here, man. We'll see you in three weeks, and we'll have you ready to go on TV here. So I went up there for three weeks, threw my razor away, came back with the, the song man thing, and, and brother, first time on TV, uh, you know, uh, 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 who was the announcer? Uh, Bob, Cottle. Bob Cottle says, folks, Whatever you do, don't leave your seat at home. Talking to the fans at home says, when we come back from this break, you're going to see the most unusual thing you have ever seen in your life. The Boogie Woogie Man is here. And, and man, it, it, when they came back from break, they played that music, Boy from New York City, and no one ever seen. Man, I went right up. Instead of going to the ring, I went up. It, it was a studio but real small, but I went up in the bleachers and I'm hugging, I'm kissing everybody, man, woman, child, blue, black, black, pink, white, it didn't matter who, man, I kissed everybody and they're dancing, high-fiving, and man, the music is blaring there and they're rocking, man, this place. And I slide into the ring, didn't even wait for the bell, the music kept playing, I boom, boom, punched the cat, man, shot him in, Gave him a big elbow, dropped a big elbow, one, two, three, got up dancing, back into the crowd dancing, dancing. I danced all the way out to the, through the curtains, and man, and it all happened within like uh, two minutes. The whole match and everything, and, and they, it, man, it went over like crazy, you know. So then they brought me back out, boy from New York City. I went out to Bob Cottle and, and uh, 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 Crockett, uh, what was Crockett's? Uh, uh, Jim Crockett. No, da uh, oh, da David. Yeah, I went out to do, back out to uh, inter do an interview, David Crockett, and, and, and man, I kissed David, man, right on air. I kissed Cotto. Man, you know, did an interview, brother. The Boogie Woogie Man was alive, and, and, and that's how it all started. And I had a, like a seven year run there, brother, as the Boogie Woogie Man in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, let's take a little break. Yeah, I uh, wrestled uh, Ivan uh, as tag team partners. We, we wrestled together uh, in Indianapolis, and, and uh, I wrestled him in California and, and uh, New York. And uh, so in 81, when I became the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, and um, crowd pleaser, and Ivan was there, and um, Sir Oliver Humperdinck was his uh, manager, and uh, he, um, of course, was in great shape. Ivan was a machine, man. And um, Ivan uh, and myself, we were both born in 1942, and we're both born in August, so we're, I think I'm, uh, I was born August 6th, and he was born something like August 17th, or something. so I'm a few days older than Ivan. And, um, uh, in fact, uh, Paul Jones is, was born in August 42, and so was uh, um, Ole Anderson. We're all was born 42 in August, so we're all Leos and, and same, same uh, birth. Um, so uh, Ivan uh, was really over as, as uh, you know, one of the top heels in, in uh, Crockett Corporation. There's 50 wrestlers, 50, maybe 60 sometime in, in um, the Crockett Company, and we, they'd wrestle three nights a week, and you know the big coliseums uh, on Saturday, and 
uh, that only uh, then, then maybe uh, uh, another club a Saturday and Sunday Sunday would wrestle twice and Saturday would wrestle twice and so we'd wrestle nine times a week in in the 80s uh, with Crockett and um, so uh, the boogie woogie man was born and uh, the first uh, challenger was Ivan Koloff he he had the TV title at that time so for the next nine months I wrestled Ivan Koloff every night man you know seven days a week and and um, Ivan uh, uh, as I said before was a machine man he was such a good shape and and he, he got me in shape man because um, you had to beat uh, 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 the TV champion the NWA TV champion within 20 minutes if you uh, went uh, without beating him in 20 minutes and their bell rang in 20 minutes the belt would stay with the champion so me and Ivan would uh, go through no one could beat each other for 20 minutes so uh, everywhere you know uh, seven days a week man we would just pound knots on each other's head you know I put a lot of scars on his head he put a lot on mine and and and, and uh, he just got us in terrific shape you know and um, uh, I was fortunate within nine months to beat Ivan twice for the TV title. In fact, both times was uh, Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And um, it, it was um, uh, funny. I didn't ha keep it long, but I'd keep it a week or two, and man, he's got it back, you know. But uh, uh, th that's, where, that's where all the, the money is chasing the belts because that's how you, you, the, the people wants to see uh, that good guy beat you you know beat the bad guy you know and and the bad guy especially if he's got something that uh, you know a belt or whatever just like uh, going back when Johnny and I had the TV uh, the, the, the WWW world have uh, heavyweight tag team belts in New York and we beat uh, Tony Gurria as I told you before and and, uh, and um, uh, Dean Ho they chased us for it the people wanted us to get beat so bad, you know, and uh, that's how that's how uh, we'd fill them arenas up, you know. And uh, uh, man, they'd work us over, and man, we'd fly all over, and they'd, they'd they'd beat us up, brother, you know, for the whole match. But some way we'd crawl out of there, you know, and while they're standing up, man, and we still have the belts, and that's where the heat comes. Talk about your feud with uh, the Break the Buki and Gary Hart. Yeah, that was a great feud. Uh, Gary Hart, uh, the playboy Gary Hart, God bless, he's uh, up there with uh, Monsoon up in the sky, man, in the square circle. Uh, Gary, uh, another Chicago boy, man, you know, he's a Chicago boy, and and um, he uh, uh, brought the kabuki over and uh, very mysterious, uh, uh, you know, he would uh, spray his, his, something out of his mouth, man, and and different colors and I had a big long beard you know blonde and blonde hair man and and I looked like a rainbow man I'd have green and blue and purple and man you can't wash that out especially the next night you're going he's spraying you again and he'd spray me every night man you know and uh, and I, I'd have all colors in my hair you know bleached out just stripped hair man and whatever it was dye or whatever it was that he was spraying brother I couldn't get it out and, and um, it, 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 it was very comical there uh, but but finally you know we figured it out man uh, and he blinds you you know when when he blinds you brother he, you can't see it's in your eyes and in your in your ears in your mouth is on your man I was just my, my tights I just look like a rainbow you know um, but uh, uh, we figured out to uh, I got some uh, real good ski go goggles you know man and and I had the goggles on brother and and when I wrestle him brother and he spray it and, and then boy it just hit the goggle of course it hit the beard and the hair again you know it, it, but uh, man I just wiped that off and man I just kicked this can then and uh, uh, hey we, we figured out how to you know go about it eventually he cheated you out of a loser leaves town match and then out of the blue Charlie Brown from out of town shows up. Talk about, talk about Charlie Brown. Yeah, man, you know, is a loser leave. And uh, uh, Gary Hart, um, uh, yeah, they screwed me, man, out of uh, that match. And uh, I had to leave. And uh, it, 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 they, they, um, 
must have had a, a row of quarters or something like uh, they had in their hand and, and uh, uh, hit me in the temple, man, knocked my lights out, you know, and the, 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 the quarters were all over the ring, you know, so that's what I figured that's what happened. And um, I had to leave, and uh, I really didn't leave. I just came back uh, with uh, a mask on, and uh, we had a mask made, you know, where the beard would hang out, you know, down to my waist, and the, and the blonde hair in the back, and, uh, you know, everybody knew it was, uh, you know, the boogie-woogie man, Jimmy Valiant, but uh, uh, Bob Cotto said, uh, you know, Gary Hart complained on the interview, says, man, you know, he said, that's Jimmy Valiant in there, you know, that's not Charlie Brown, he says, that's what it says right here, it's Charlie Brown from out of town. He says, if you, uh, Gary, he says, if you think that's Jimmy Valley, you got to take the mask off and then, you know, to, to prove it. Otherwise, hey, we just got to go with the, that wrestler. That's who it is. And and uh, all the people loved it. Of course, uh, I knocked down Jimmy, uh, uh, Gary Hart, and I knocked down Kabuki. And when they're both down and they're not looking, I'd take my mask off. I'd wave to all the fans. You know, they loved it. And I'd put it back on. And, oh, man, you know, it, it, it was just great. And, um it, it was a great run with Kabuki, and uh, uh, it, it, it was just. Uh, in fact, um, I won. Uh, he had the TV title at that time, and uh, won the Starcades, and I beat him for it. And uh, Charlie Brown. So Charlie Brown had the TV title too for um, uh, Mid Atlantic. Kind of after that, you wrapped up. You got involved with uh, Paul Jones and the Assassins. Uh, I think most people remember them coming out and cutting your beard, man. That. Yeah, that was a serious deal there. You know, uh, uh, your, your most serious angles, you know, to draw money in our profession is uh, something personal. And um, Paul Jones and his army, and, and at that time he was wrestling assassins. And uh, for a year, man, I'd bring in partners, Dusty Rhodes, Magnum TA, you know, uh, Raging Bull, you know, uh, uh, Bugsy McGraw, you know, man, I just bring in partner after partner going against the assassins, and we could never uh, take their mask off, you know. No one ever took their mask off, you know, and no one ever could beat them. And, and uh, so finally, you know, they, they had it with me because I kept, man, you know, coming after them, you know. So they tied me up on the rope and um, uh, why, why they held the held me, held me, tied me up, you know, Paul Jones cut my beard off, you know, a beard I was growing probably five, six years, you know, and, and, um, and they, they thought that would be the end of Boogie Woogie, and I did, I disappeared, man, you know, for a while, and they found me out on the streets, man, and, you know, uh, uh, it, it was uh, something that I was down real low, man, and, and, and I told the people, I says, you know, he, yeah, Paul Jones took something that belonged to me, something personal, you know, he took the hair from my face, you know, and I, I says, you know, I want just one more match with the assassins, and I says, uh, you know, if, if you give me that, I said, all I ask for, I says, uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to take their mask off, you know, because I want to take something personal from them, like they did me. And I says, if I don't take your mask off, you know, assassins, I says, uh, then they can shave my head. They can have my hair, and, and they can, uh, uh, you know, hey, and I, that'll be it, you know. But just give me one more shot. And they called it the Boogeyman Jam. It was 1984, and it did big business, man, you know. Uh, we broke records, you know, uh, attendance-wise, you know. They'd, the, the fire people would shut down, they can't get no more in the building, went to Asheville on a Sunday afternoon, and man, they were sitting in the aisles, you know, and uh, it, it, it was great. And, and, and um, what we'd do, we'd go out, brother, and I'd go to Charlotte Coliseum, the uh, Richmond Coliseum, with Norfolk Scope, man, we'd go everywhere. Uh, against the assassins because every each town I had a chance to lose my hair but man I take the mask off you know and that was a boogeyman jam and it was a real great great deal now, Paul Jones and his army that not only that it lasted for five years it's probably one of the longest running feuds ever you know and in his army man he had the barbarian he had the Abdullah Butcher he had the uh, Baron Von Roska you know he had uh, uh, you know, all these guys, these the thugs coming after me, you know, superstar Billy Graham was in his army, and uh, 
it finally came down to the final blow up between me and Paul Jones, hair against hair, and um, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to line that up, he says, "You gotta, you gotta put your hair up against my my army," you know. So we shaved Shaska's hair, you know. We shaved, you know, other people's army's hair, and then finally, after that, it came down to me and Paul Jones. Well, after I went through his army, all the people knew Paul Jones was a great wrestler, you know. But he hasn't wrestled in years. He was a manager then for five years, you know. So. Uh, he was soft, you know, he wasn't in shape like I was, so they knew I could beat him. And they knew I could take his hair. And no one ever took his hair, you know. Uh, and they was after his hair for 20 years there, you know, in, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina territory. And, and uh, so they just said, but this is it. So we had a big match, me and Paul, and, and uh, man, he, <laughs> he, he, you know, screwed me out of the deal, man. And, and they, I took it like a man. I sit in the chair and they shave my head. And then we finally came back. One last one. And, and uh, it was the last blow off. And, and finally, uh, we, 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 uh, uh, I, got, I got the revenge. And then the big feud was over because Paul Jones became, we shaved his head. And it was a bald headed geek. And that all, you call that whole feud with his army, what do you call it? Uh, Valiance War. Valiance War. In fact, uh, we got it right there. We got the big uh, poster up there. Uh, we can take a picture of, zoom in. Uh, it was my war. Uh, I had the T-shirt made, man, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, oh, man, hey, it, it, I had so many partners with me in that, but I took it all on myself, you know, because it was my war, yeah. Uh, one more. One more story before we uh, go to the camp and everything. Uh, Jared bought you, a, Jared and Longer bought you a house. Uh, tell, them, tell me how they, how that wound up happening. Yeah, in the 80s, uh, uh, they kept, every time they'd bring me in, man, they, they said, when are you coming home, handsome? When are you coming to stay? When are you coming to work our territory? And, and I was very happy in, with uh, uh, Mid-Atlantic Wrestling with the uh, Crockett uh, Company. and. And I says, uh, I, I was tired of him asking me this, you know. I says, look, man, I says, hey, you buy me a house, I'll come in, I'll, I'll work for you for, for the rest of the time, you know. I says, buy me a house and, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll do a deal. And, you know, and they laugh, oh, man, handsome wants a house, bop, 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 bop. So, so I, I go on home, I forgot about it, man. And a couple of days they call me, says, hey, we got you booked in two more weeks when you come here. He says, pick out the house. We're going to buy you a house. We want you, you know. So um, we did. We, man, he, uh, Lawler was there and Jared there and their lawyer, and they picked me up in the big limo. And, man, they, we went around. I found a house at, you know, Little Swimming Pool and bop, 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 and signed a deal. And all I had to do was stay there five years and the house was mine. So what they did, and there was no rent being paid, they pay, they're paying the rent, the nut, nut on the house, the, uh, they take it out of the, the, the um, you know, off top of the Memphis Coliseum every week. And um, so in five years, the deed was deal, done, they give me the deed to the house. And um, I stayed six months, and I, I was never home. Man, I, they fly me everywhere. I was in Puerto Rico. They'd send me to Japan. I'd be in, I was in Charlotte <laughs> over half the time, you know, because now Krakus wants me, you know, back. And, and um, so it just wasn't worth it to me. And Lawler wrote his book, you know, and I, I wrote my book, uh, you know, Woo Mercy Daddy, Welcome My World, The Jimmy Valiant Story. And, and in, in the book, I said I stayed six months, which it did. I stayed six months, and then I just gave him the key back, and that was it. But Lawler's book, he says, Hanson, we bought him a house. He stayed six weeks, you know, but I was there six months. Okay, uh, tell me, uh, you said in your book you met three angels in your life. Tell me about meeting the third angel in your life. Angel. Tell me that. Meet her. Yeah, you bet. You know, um, 1981, um, I um, was floating for a week. I, I, um, uh, I was married. I divorced uh, my second wife. I, I was married the first time 17 years. I love married life. I love it. You know, it's me. And um, 
the second marriage lasted 13 years, and that's 30 years of marriage right there, man. You know, two, two ladies, and I had children with both of them. Um, they were mother to my children, and um, I, I went from the first one right into the second one. This, this time after the second one, uh, I um, took a year off. You know, I didn't, I, I just uh, uh, wanted to uh, just float around and just do my thing, whatever, and, you know, find myself. Um, I, um, you know, did some hardcore drugs, uh, um, you know, for many years. Um, I wanted to clean myself up. I, I knew uh, that if I continued what I was doing, I wouldn't be here long, you know. And, and um, if, if you want to live, uh, you know, you, you have to take better care of yourself, you know. And um, so I was already starting to do that. Uh, in fact, I was, uh, man, I cut off maybe by this time, time I met Angel, uh, maybe three quarters. I was just doing just certain stuff just to, you know, so I could relax enough to go to sleep at night and, and, and um, uh, you know, just uh, I was trying to get back into health, nature, um, you know, working out and, and ha how I started out, you know, as a young boy. And um, I knew something, I, 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 you know, spiritually I was uh, getting, getting right with God again, um, getting uh, right, you know, with my body and, and nature. And, and, uh, but it took a woman, a good woman, to, to get me over the uh, 100 percent. And um, I met Angel, and, uh, you know, uh, I, the day I met her, uh, you know, I says, look, look, uh, let's take this real slow, you know, and, and, and um, I'll tell you how slow we took it. In, in, in uh, four months, we were married, and we're living where we live now at the White House and, and started our camp together and everything together, you know. Um, but this lady saved my life, you know. I, I, I honestly um, uh, wanted this to happen, uh, and it did happen. I was just looking for the right lady. And, and um, you know, once you, you hook up with someone, you can't be apart. You can't stay apart, you know. You, it's... Uh, it happens fast, you know, especially as as an adult, you know. And and again, um, I love married life. Um, we've been married 20 years, Angel and myself. Um, and um, hey, we never had a cross word. We don't we don't argue. I refuse to. She refuses to. Um, you know, our biggest uh, thing uh, would be. Uh, uh, talking about, hey, where do you want to go eat? You know, where, where do you want, baby? You know, it's good with me. She, well, no, what do you, <laughs> you know? So, so it, it's easy, man. She's a Leo. I'm a Leo. You know, we, we just, we're, we're like, uh, we're lovers. We're, we're like brothers and sisters. We're the best friends. We're, we're, uh, you know, she's my right hand, man. You know, she's, she's everything to me. I, I, I can't. Um, um, Man, I, I can't I can't be away from her, you know. I, I refuse to, and I won't, you know. It's just um, she's she's just such a good uh, person and such a good um, lady, you know. And and she's so talented, man. She she's a great singer. She she's a great artist. She she sews, you know. She she do it all, you know. Um, so certain people can do many many things. And, and uh, uh, some people can just do one thing, you know, but she's a person that can do many, many things great, you know, very, very good. Jerry Lawler's another person. He can do so many things, and everything he does is great, and Angel's the same way. Talk about getting the call to be a part of the WWF, I guess the WWF Hall of Fame at the time. What did that mean to you when you got that phone call knowing that you're going to be going along beside all the greats? history and you're now part of that what does that mean to you what does that, what does that say about your career yeah that's um, man it's like the you know the Super Bowl you know you know winning the Super Bowl and getting your ring you know or 
or the uh, uh, world world champion, you know, uh, uh, basketball. You know, when you you go for the, the the big one, man. You know, or hey, you know, or or the Hall of Fame baseball in Cooperstown. You know, or they got Hall of Fame football and basketball. Every every sport. You know, this is our sport. This is our sport, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very honored. You know. Uh, um, I think uh, Johnny and myself and Captain Lou, uh, we were inducted the same year, 1996, WWE. Um, and and um, before us, there was three other classes. And of course, the first one was Andre the Giant. He was the only one inducted that year. And, and then, um, you know, uh, two more classes than ours. Um, and, and uh, you know, it, it was so special that um, to me, uh, meant so much, and I'm very proud of it, you know. Um, and it's something that I can, uh, pro, uh, you know, to parlay uh, to help my kids. You know, I've already lived out my life, you know. I've already done uh, this uh, great sport of professional wrestling. It's taking care of my families, you know, and it's taken uh, me all over the world. Uh, and, and now I've, I've already done that, lived my life, and, and have already, uh, now it's time for my, my kids, you know, all my students to make their dream uh, come true, you know, make their dream reality, you know, and, and this, uh, uh, being in the Hall of Fame um, helps that, you know, um, because uh, it, it is such an honor and, and to be so few um, and that I am just thrilled to be able to, um, uh, just be here with my kids and and to be able to help them. All right, let's talk about uh, this camp. How did it come about? I mean, what's it, what's it mean to you? What's it, what is BWC for you? How did you tell me a little history on it? Well, you know, everywhere I ever went, man, you know, uh, I, I people ask me, how do you get into this professional wrestling? You know, when I started wrestling in 1964, there was no um, wrestling camps, you know. Um, in the 70s, there was one, uh, Bob Saber had something out of Chicago, uh, another guy had something, you know, out of Minneapolis, uh, Lou Klein had one out of Detroit, they, they started coming here and there, but there was no wrestling, Ganya started one in, in, in you know, in, in Minnesota, and, and um, so, so uh, there was not that many camps, you know, like, like uh, so, so I says, when I get retired, when I finish, I said, I'm going to start a camp. I, I had this plan for, for years, you know, for 20 years. And um, so um, in, in um, 1992, uh, I was on a tour over in, in uh, uh, UE, uh, uh, United Arab Emirates, over, you know, in, around the uh, um, Arab, uh, uh, around uh, Saudi Arabia and all that, wrestling over there. And it's just after the first Gulf War. and, and uh, they, they invited a group over, and, and in my group uh, uh, was uh, killer uh, Tim Brooks. And I've known Tim. We started, uh, you know, together in the early 60s. And um, so uh, Kim had a wrestling school, you know, and we're over there, man, and, uh, you know, we're up in the top of the Hilton in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and and uh, uh, we're, we're, uh, we, we went there for three weeks. Uh, we only wrestled um, uh, something like nine times in three weeks, so we had a lot of time on our hands. So uh, we, we, we'd go up and, man, he's smoking these big uh, Turkish cigars and I'm dipping Copenhagen and we're laying on the, you know, up on the, you know, uh, uh, sunning and playing cards and talking and it's my old buddy having a good time. And, and he said, you know, uh, uh, Boogie says you you ought to start a wrestling school and you know you know for the kids and that and I said you know my my plans are when I finish I am, and he says man do it now man I have such enjoyment doing this you know helping the kids out you know uh, that wants to be come down in our business you know and and um, so I'm thinking about I got a lot of time to think you know and I, I call Angel you know I talk to her you, you know and I'm. Uh, I'm not saying too much uh, about that, but I, I, I'm saying, you know, he's got a wrestling school and 
and he's doing good. And I says, you know, I'm, we're going to do this, honey. Uh, you know, when when I retire, you know, I was still on the independent circuit and everything, and so so uh, I was making um, something like twenty five hundred a week there. So three weeks, that's seventy five hundred dollars. So um, I didn't say nothing to Angel, but I got it in my mind. I says, man, when I get home, I'm going to talk to my baby. And so we got home and uh, you know, off of three weeks and 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 um, you know, I'm not saying we. W didn't go on a honeymoon then, brother, me and my girl, but hey, because we never been off one, we still on a honeymoon, but 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 it, it was great, you know, as long as I ever been away from her, you know, and um, I, I had $7,500, man, you know, because they fed us over there three times a day, um, uh, you know, all the transportation, all the, you know, the, the nice, everything was paid for. And, and uh, so I bought her, you know, a little gift, uh, you know, uh, um, a little uh, uh, Persian gold uh, um, bracelet. That's the only thing I spent money on, Brand brought it home to her. And so when I came, I had the, the bulk of that $7,500. And I says, look, Angel, baby, I says, we can take this $7,500 so we can pay bills with it. I said, we can put it in a bank. I said, or we can blow it, man. I said, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me, you know. I said, or we can build a building, you know. Uh, the, this is our camp building w that we built. And, and in 1992, I built this building for $7,500. And, and um, brother, you, it, it costs you $75,000 today, you know. But, um, uh, I, I came home and, and we built it on our land, you know, that we had. We got two acres here at Compound, and that's how BWC started. We, we, we built it a year, uh, uh, the, the, the next year, uh, September of um, um, 92, we, we opened it up, and uh, our first class graduated in September of 93, and um, this last September was uh, our 18th graduating class, 2010. What's this place offer these kids? I mean, it's a chance to go live their dreams. Yes, yes. This sign behind me says it all. You know, uh, only you can make your dream come true. And uh, they make their dream come true by walking through that door. And, uh, you know, everything's positive here. You know, all the signs, you know, uh, right here, believe, succeed, uh, uh, su uh, succeed. You know, on this side, have yourself a great life, you know. Behind you, if you see someone without a smile, give them yours. You know what I mean? You know, um, BWC, where every student is 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 important. You know, um, Angel, and myself, um, yeah, we take all. They're all our kids. You know, no matter how old they are, we, we call them our kids. They could be 30, 40 years old, but they're our kids. You know, and we take them uh, under our wing, man, and under our umbrella, and and um, hey, we make their dream come true here, and um, it happens. What's it like watching your kids grow into uh, performers and managers and just keep growing up? Yeah, it thrills me, you know, because uh, I'm still out on the road, you know. Uh, uh, I'm not wrestling too much no more, but uh, I'm out there, you know, I'll do a special referee or I'll do a personal appearance. And so I'm somewhere every Saturday night, you know, and of course every Sunday, 12 to 4, we're here at Camp BWC, Boogie's Wrestling Camp Hall of Fame Museum. But uh, man, when I see that my, my kids out there performing, I'm just like a proud father, you know. It just makes uh, me and Angel feel so good. And uh, uh, what good, uh, uh, you know, that, that they take out of it and how they, they protect, uh, yeah, you know, of course, their self, but to protect their opponent. And uh, where, where, you know, if you're not trained, you know, you're hurting yourself. You know, if you're not trained, the right way and you're hurting your opponent and uh, uh, hey, you don't last long, you know. It, it's something, uh, you gotta be uh, uh, the right way. When, when I first got into business in 64, the only way you learned was on the job training. Um, and these old timers, brother, they all had the 20 inch necks and cauliflower ears and busted noses, brother, man. And, and if they didn't like you, brother, you know, they, they would hurt you. You know, they would, um, you wouldn't last long, man. You know, you'd be out of here, you know, because they, they'd run you out of our business, you know, um, uh, it, because they were tough characters and it, they protected the business like they protect your family, you know. Um, and and uh, it was a much a harder 
harder business to get into. Uh, uh, nowadays, you know, you go to a credit school and, and you will learn uh, not only old school, you know, like I teach old school, but we still teach the new stuff too, what they see on WWE today. Uh, you got to teach both, you know, and we teach both here at Boogie's Wrestling Camp in Shawsville, Virginia. Um, because if you don't teach the old school, it's going to be a lost art, you know. Uh, it won't be around, you know, because uh, now it's, uh, you know, they're monsters, they're high flying, you're doing this and that. Uh, but we teach the storytelling too. You know, you tell a story in there, you know, to uh, be able to bring the people right out of their seats at will. You know, it, it's a, you, you have such control, you know, over a, a preacher can do it, you know. Uh, you know, man, you just fire that the, the congregation up, you know. I mean, just uh, he can bring them up. He can make them cry. He can, you know, make them laugh. He can make them pray. He can make them do everything. Uh, a, a good performer on stage can do the same thing. Professional wrestling can, too. It takes so many years to learn that, you know. And it seems like when most of the, the wrestlers learn that, it's, it's, <laughs> they're on their way out because it's, you got to master that, you know. But at will, what power you have at will at any time you want to bring them people right out of their seats and man scream and yell and, you know, and then when you want, you can sit them right back down, you know, it's, it's something. I heard you say you've had over a th thousands and thousands of matches and drove millions of miles on the highways and this is kind of your way of uh, getting back to wrestling. You bet, yeah. Uh, Angel, myself, we built this on our two-acre compound, Boogie's Wrestling Camp Hall of Fame Museum, and um, we have five, six buildings here. This is the main camp building, but we have the Hall of Fame building, we have two dressing rooms, we have the office, we have my office uh, over on the right, and every room is like this. There's thousands and thousands of pictures, collages, posters, so much history here of anybody that's wrestled uh, probably in the last hundred years, you know. I have, uh, you know, the, from the, 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 the major stars of today, you know, to the ones back in the early of the century. And uh, um, this is something we give back to. We invite anybody come any Sunday, 12 to 4, come be Angel, my guest. There's no charge. This is what we give back, not only to our community here in the New River Valley of uh, Virginia. We're, we're uh, uh, just uh, uh, 15 miles from Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia Tech is, 20 miles from Roanoke, Virginia, Shawsville, Virginia we are. And just look it up, jimmyvaliant.com, you know, jimmyvaliantweebly.com. Um, and and uh, this is something that we want people to come, and they do. Every Sunday they come in from... All, all, all parts of the states from, uh, we've had people come from Japan, from uh, England, you know, from Canada, you know, they come uh, uh, just to come and be part for four hours, only open four hours, 12 noon to four o'clock. Uh, it's, we're, we're out here in the country, man, a river right across the street, Roanoke River. Uh, man, there's, there's cows over here, farms, a dairy farm, everybody, we're right out here in the farmland. And it's so peace and quiet, you know, all week. But brother on Sunday, man, it's rolling. It's balling and squalling, climbing the wall. Old time jubilee is happening here at BWC. And please come be our guest. Spend a day with us. There's no charge. Watch our kids perform. Uh, you know, we have matches, and it's all free. And this is what Angel and myself, we've done this purposely for you to come out to enjoy. And where can you bring your family, you know, uh, if you go to a movie uh, you, with your family and, and, and whatever, it's going to cost you thirty, forty, fifty dollars. Who knows what you know, or any other kind of entertainment. Here, there's no charge. And, uh, this is your life. Our life, yes, it is our life. Angel, our life. Uh, we we live it uh, 24 hours a day, brother man. You know, and um, during the week, uh, uh, hey, I'm always up here. Uh, you know, working on the camp and working on the grounds and Angel's downstairs. She's got uh, Angel's wrestling wear. She's uh, working on the, the boys' outfits, singlets and robes, jackets, mask. You know, she does it all. Wonderful work she does. Um, of course, on the weekend, we promote Saturday. I go somewhere, promote uh, BWC. 
and uh, do something. If, if not, I, I just go to a, a flea market. I'll set up and just promote it. You know, invite everybody out. And then Sunday, of course, from 12 to 4, we have our camp. And uh, uh, it, it's just something special to see. Yeah, uh, ribs, man, you know, is a big part of our business. You know, uh, uh, you you got so many times that you're out on the road, man, and 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 uh, you just gotta think up stuff to keep awake for one thing. You know, you're driving four or five hundred miles years ago, especially you know, because uh, we we'd have to be in a different city, different state every night. You know, and uh, uh, man, you know, would put pull ribs on. You know, like would take turns driving and and. Uh, uh, you know, you're driving, and now it's the other guy's turn to, to drive. So uh, uh, say, say uh, uh, he would get uh, now. Now it's my turn to drive. So I'm driving, and the guy just got done driving. Maybe you know, uh, two hours. You know, and 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 uh, I let him just get to sleep. You know, over there in uh, uh, shot riding shotgun with me, man. You know, and and uh, all of a sudden, brother, you know. Uh, I'd, uh, you know, have the window down or something. I'd bang, I'd hit the top, and I'd swerve it like this, and he'd wake up. Man, what happened, man? I says, oh, man, you know, there's a, there's a big, big something in the road. What in the world, you know? And, oh, my goodness, you know. So, we, we, oh, that's where you go. go. Go back to sleep. So he'd go back to sleep, man, and, and, and I'd, I'd slam on the brakes, man, or something, you know. Just rib, just messing with people. It's it just good stuff, you know. Um, I, I know uh, Bob Wharton Sr., uh, you know, I talk about this in my autobiography, you know, Woo Mercy Daddy, and uh, um, I was just a kid, this was when Fritz von Erich, this was like 1969, and uh, uh, we was in a, a hotel, and, and uh, we got in 3, 4 in the morning, man, I was so tired, you know, man, and uh, I couldn't wait to lay down, we shared a room, two beds, and and, and this is, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, senior. He called. He's called himself the Big O then. And and, and uh, of course, his son was Bob Orton Jr. And, and of course, his son is is Randy Orton, is a major star of WWE, big big star now. You know, of course. Um, so he's third generation. So I'm talking about his his grandfather, Randy's grandfather. And um, so. Uh, and he, he, he's sitting on the bed. He's getting ready for bed. I'm getting ready for bed, man. And 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 he gets in his bag and he puts a, a big pistol out, you know, on the on the on the um, nightstand between us. And man, I'm, I'm laying down. I'm looking right at that pistol. <laughs> man, it looks like a cannon, you know. And and um, I said, Bob, what, what's the pistol for? He says. You got to be ready, kid. You got to be ready for anything. I said, okay, man. And, and you know, and I, so I take my finger and I push it so it's pointing towards the TV. It's pointing towards me, you know. And uh, so he laughs and that, and he goes to sleep. And, and man, I was so tired, you know, that uh, I was wanting to just lay down and crash, you know, because it's going to be daylight in a couple hours. And now I'm wide awake, man. That, that gun, man, you know, looking right down at 44, brother, man, and, and he's over there, and he's, he starts snoring, man, in 30 seconds, man, and I said, oh, man, so, you know, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I was thinking about taking the lamp, hit myself in the head, knock myself out so I could get a little sleep, you know, a little shut-eye, but uh, then, you know, it, hey, he did that for a rib, you know, it's all ribs and it, good stuff, good stuff, man, all good stuff. Well, talk a little bit about the, the life on the road, you see a lot of people come, see a lot of people go. It, it's a hard life, but it's also you have know, a lot of excitement, a lot of good times. Just talk about what you remember from all that. Yeah, oh man, it's great times, you know, uh, brother. You know, um, you got to have the, make the best out of uh, uh, the road. Um, otherwise, um, you know, you you just uh, you can't you can't get tied up and and all. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, you're resting seven days a week. Um, you, you don't go home that much, and and um, you got to let out steam. You know, so most of the boys, uh, you know, the old timers, most of them, you know, it, it, 
they turned to alcohol, you know, and 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 um, later on the boys turned to drugs, you know. But uh, uh, hey, it, it's a way to cope, you know. The way to it's a hard life, man. I mean, any kind of life you're away from your family, um, you know, it, it's not a real good life for a married person, you know, um, for for many many reasons, you know, because uh, you you know you, you you can't watch your children. Uh, grow up, uh, you know, they, they grow up so fast and you miss, you miss half their life, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, you, you, you had to have a good time, you know. Uh, it, it can't be all, you know, uh, uh, getting to the work. Uh, you know, we, we used to uh, just keep going. You know, you, 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 a lot of guys years ago, you know, they didn't make money like they do today, you know. We would uh, uh, call it a blowny blowout, man. You know, we'd stop at a store and get a loaf of bread and a, a you know a pound of blowny and a jar of mayonnaise and all get a drink. Get back in the car. There's four of us, you know. And man, we'd make them sandwiches and keep going. You got to go, you know. And it's the cheapest way. And we'd all pitch in for gas. And man, we'd call it heel in the room. Years ago, man, you know, we'd have to get in there and sometimes we'd have two beds and maybe there's four guys and we're splitting it and we're trying to make it because uh, the money wasn't there, you know. Um, so we'd take a mattress and we'd throw two mattresses on the floor and one sleeping on the box springs and one sleeping on the mattress and, you know, you learn, you learn, you know, all the old timers, they're down there on the mattress because that box, but the young guys say, oh yeah, yeah, they want the box springs because they think that's High, a little higher and a little softer. Well, that's the hardest. That's hard as the ring is, man. You know, but uh, yeah, it's everything seniority too. The guys, you know, uh, it's all respect. You know, the uh, who came before you, who paved the road for you, and. Vince, when you look back on, on on your career, what do you want people to remember about it? What What is your legacy? Yeah, 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 you know, I was very fortunate to work in all the best territories and biggest territories, you know. Uh, New York, you know, uh, I was there three different times, stayed over a year each time, WWF, WWE. Uh, you know, uh, uh, went to WWA, you know, maybe six times. Uh, Memphis, six times, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, Atlanta, you know, uh, San Francisco, um, uh, of course, Crockett, you know, stayed there seven, eight years. I was very fortunate to, to be, because uh, your best territories, money-wise, you know, was, of course, New York first, and then uh, Vern Gagne, uh, AWA, uh, paid good. I mean, it was a good territory, and then Crockett was super, super territory, you know. So I was fortunate uh, to uh, be able to uh, uh, work the, the big time territories and, and not the smaller ones, you know, uh, as much. And, um, but, um, yeah, what was that second part? What do you remember your legacy, your career, what, what you want the fans and the audience? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's um, I was fortunate to stay on top uh, for over 40 years in our business, uh, and 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 um, the only reason uh, how I did that was that uh, uh, I gave the promoter 100% uh, every night. Um, I, I would uh, go and 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 you know be on time. Uh, it, it's a business, you know. Um, there's plenty of time. Here's how I look at it, guys. You know. Um, it, 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 there's there's 24 hours in a day. Uh, in the ring, you may be in there 10, 15 minutes. That's all. Say 15 minutes. So you take that 15 minutes and you bust your can. You give them all you got. I mean, give them. I mean, reach in where you 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 know if you're out of gas, man, you, you got to just find it somewhere and just continue. You know, you know, taking it to them and, and, and give them the best show you can, you, you can possibly can, for 15 minutes. From the time you walk out of that dressing room till you enter the ring, have your match, 
and continue until you disappear, then you can, you know, uh, kick back and do your thing. But what I'm th saying is 15 minutes is, is when you got to really go. Don't loaf. This ain't the time to loaf because you've got another 23 hours and 45 minutes every single day to do anything you want, to just jack around, man, eat, play ribs, go to sleep. You get, you know, of course, you're traveling to the thing, but when you're in that square circle, that ain't the time to play, see? And that's what I learned early in my career. I understood that. Uh, I always wore my gimmick. You know, if it was the headbands, the, the, the headpieces, or the flashy robes, I don't care if there was five people in that audience or 5,000 people. I always did that, and I always gave them 100%. That's how I stayed on, uh, you know, 40 years on top. And that's my legacy. You know, um, Dick the Bruiser, when he died, um, his wife, Rio, uh, she told uh, uh, me, she says, you know, Jimmy, she says, Dick just really loves you. She says, um, he, he told me many, many times, he says, I wish I had 20 of Jimmy Valiants in my territory. And the reason why is because I never gave him static. I never gave him no reason, you know, to, uh, I was on time and I gave